Hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Is that working? Yes. Excellent. Hello, guys. Welcome along. Um, happy holidays. I'm on my holidays, so uh, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, get, I'm getting a, a last stream in before I head off to, uh, uh, to, to France for a, a week or so. And um, then I'll, uh, yeah, I won't be, I won't be obviously uh, streaming Amiga stuff or even doing much Amiga stuff. Then I'll be sitting in wine terraces and enjoying some some relaxing, <laughs> some relaxing time. But yeah, so welcome along, guys. Hello, how are you? Um, and as as always, let me know if uh, music is too loud or too quiet or what the story is. But um. Yeah, um, welcome along. I'm going to uh, do a little bit of Blitz stuff, more more general stuff. Um, there's a couple of things that I kind of thought about from the previous one, from the previous stream that I was going to, uh, as, you know, that I've never got time to do or never looked at. But um, yeah, so I was, I was going to look at a couple of little things like that and then just talk about li the general, the, the Blitz libraries, some, some yeah, some you know, just some random stuff about the different command libraries. Not all of them, not going to go through every single one of them, but, um, you know, just a generally kind of, so a general overview of them, what, what you know, the, what the common ones that I use, and um, and have a look at the uh, Ami Blitz Includes. Now, the Ami Blitz Includes are kind of Blitz, uh, Ami Blitz specific stuff. So, you, you know, in theory, you could use them in Blitz too, but they're not, uh, they tend to use a little bit of the sort of the, the one percent that isn't compatible, and um, yeah, so so uh, you know it'll be it'll be a little bit tricky. They need to be ported to Blitz two basically. So um, so that's that's the story. But what what I will do is um, well the first the first thing I was going to do and one thing that I missed or forgot about the last time was um, program startup arguments. So you know when you uh, start a program from the shell. Oh yeah, put that over there. You know when you start a program from the shell and it. You know, you can give it some arguments. I was going to go over the the, the basics of that. All right. So, um, yeah. So here we go. So I'm using Ami Blitz, but this should work in Blitz too as well. Um, okay. <sighs> nice cup of tea to start the holidays. But uh, don't worry, I have some wine as well. I'm just uh, yeah. <laughs> Mm hmm Hello, Ian. How are you? Hello, hello, hello. How are things? Ah, good stuff. I'm all right. I was just saying, I'm, I'm very happy. I have finished work for a couple of weeks now today, and uh, so I'm in holiday mood. <laughs> so uh, there you go. So happy out. It's quite nice because it's like it felt like everyone in work has already been on holidays and I've been like sitting there and I'm like oh my god I wish I was on holidays, I wish I was on holidays and now there you go. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so um Oh I can I can also talk a little bit about structs with you if you want. I can go through a little bit of that kind of stuff. Should you should you wish? That is no problem at all. Oh good stuff. Good stuff off anywhere nice. Um, I didn't, let me see, I'm going to go and look at the, the Discord now. Um, where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it, so it's the, bum, 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 bum. So, okay, so this is Blitz2 dis Discord, or the Blitz Basic Discord. Um, aha. Yeah. Yeah, when when you when you get dumped in to something heavy like that, it is a bit daunting and stuff. And that's kind of uh, yeah, it's 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 part of what I like about Blitz Basic is it's very easy to just get started in. You know, it's very easy just to get going, and it, it kind of tends to make it uh, you know a, a, a lot more sense. It loses a, a bit in that you know it's not as flexible or as efficient as as doing C, but um, yeah, it's yeah. It, it's uh yeah it's it's um yeah there you go 
But um Yeah. Yeah, it's and that, that's that's that stuff you're talking about there is stuff that I haven't even you know, I haven't dealt with myself just because it's just too much of a faff to be honest. <laughs> but um Oh yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely, absolutely. There is a bit of that as well. Um, yeah. So it. Yeah, I suppose I see. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, fair enough. Fair enough. Well. Yeah. Well, hopefully. <laughs> There, you know, I think I think no matter what way you look, there's always going to be a load of stuff to learn. So, uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, no, stick 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 with it, I suppose. But um, yeah, it's uh, I know I, I I like to know what's going on. To be honest, I I don't really like black boxing stuff. I that's why I, I kind of tend to be sort of fairly hands on with it as well. Like you know, with the kind of with make creating the graphics and stuff. So I know exactly what bit planes are used and. You know, like have control of the palette and all that kind of stuff. You know, it's I I like to do things that way as well. Um, yeah. Anyways, right. I am going to pour myself a glass of wine because I'm on my holidays. <laughs> mhm. Mm yeah. No, I'll have to I'll have to check that stuff out because I haven't I haven't used it uh, all that much now or at all. <laughs> Ha! <laughs> ah, yeah. Yup. Um, okay. So, what, yeah, so what I was going to cover here is, um, the, um, uh, sorry, what was I saying? Yeah, so program startup arguments. So, you know, so you can give it, so you can control your program when you start up. So, um, yeah, so what I'm going to do is we're just going to make it sort of a very simple shell program. Okay. And yeah, it'll it'll just sort of tell you your arguments and stuff like that. So um, um yeah, let me think. Uh, I have to remember. <laughs> yeah, I have to remember myself what they are. Okay, so well, first off, we're gonna do. Even though it's worth writing a shell program, we will put WB startup in there so that if you do double click it, it doesn't crash. You know, you can just quit do and do nothing. So uh, so we'd put that in there. Now, yep, exactly. So now we'll, um, oh, <laughs> um, oh, now I'm gonna have to look up the, the, the help, right? So, uh, so programming in Blitz is on, on Ami Blitz. If you go to the programming in Blitz, this is basically the Amiga Guide version of the original Blitz 2 manual, which is quite cool. Okay, well, sure, I'll talk to you in a minute. Um, so I know there's a chapter that deals with program startup and it's like C args or arg count or something like that, but I just can't remember. Hey, hey. <laughs> yes, another useless tool. Absolutely, you can never have too many of them. <laughs> uh, program startup command, program startup, there we go. Okay, so, oh yeah, numpars and parse string. Okay, that's what it is. So we'll just leave that at the back there. So, uh, so we're going to do uh, put that in a very a word variable. Uh, okay, so that is, and then oh, what am I doing? Power count. And then we do uh, just a loop to go through each of them. Um, oh, we should really make sure we have at least one. So if power count, that basically means if you if you if you don't give it a comparison, that just basically means if it's true, which is if it's positive, if, if it's a number, a non-zero number, and then. We we'll go through each of them. Oh, excellent! <laughs> nice work. 
Um, sorry, uh, Javier. Um, what I'm doing here is uh, a little bit more general. So this, this, you can use this stuff for uh, this is for, uh, for giving your program some arguments when you start it up from the shell. So you could use this with a, a program that uses a GUI it, it, with MUI or GAD tools or anything. It doesn't really matter. Um, but this is just for starting it up from the shell. It's just something that I, I meant to cover back a few, uh, a stream or two ago, and I just forgot about it. Or I didn't get time, whatever, it slipped my mind. So I'm just gonna cover it now, and I'm gonna cover a few different, I'm just gonna go through some libraries um, just to cover a few different things. Hey, hey, <laughs> Amiga Bill's illegitimate son, how are you? How are you, good to see you again. Mm -hmm. Well, I've only just started and um, yeah, so on, only get started, although um, I'm already on the wine because I'm in holidays. I'm on my, I finished work today for a couple of weeks, so happy days. And uh, <laughs> ah, that's that's an all right glass of wine. It's not, it's not big, it's close to the camera. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm all good, thanks. I think, um, yeah, there's, there's a few people in. Hope, hope they're all right, I think. Um, Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully everyone's good. <laughs> but um, yeah, so here we go. Basically what I'm doing is just getting some arguments from the program on startup. And I can show you how to debug this as well. But this is this is useful, you know, if you want to give your program a couple of different options for when it starts up, especially if it's a kind of a tool, you can give it a file name or something like that, you know, to start with. And yeah, so what we're gonna do is uh, for i equals one to par count, and then we'll do. Um, uh, I can't remember what it is. No, uh, uh, par string. Oh yeah. Uh, actually, I think this starts at zero. So what I'm going to do is we're going to uh, we'll do uh, i minus one. So if we have one argument. The first argument is actually number zero. So if you have two arguments, they be zero and one, and so on and so forth. So uh, let's just see if that even compiles. So let's save that as something anyway. Uh, what are we doing? Where did we put this stuff? Oh, sure, it's, uh, streaming. Uh, we call it startup test. <laughs> oh yeah, no, fair enough. Um, absolutely, and and yeah, same goes for everyone. Pop in with our and uh, ask questions and suggestions because I'm kind of treating this as a more sort of general one, a tidy up if you like, and um, it's going to cover a few other things that I haven't really, uh, you know, that pe people have asked about in the past and uh, or things that I've missed co covering myself. But okay, so. There are a few different things, and I should, I should mention this first, there are a few different uh, systems for reading the arguments in. Now, Amiga DOS has its own very, very cool argument system, and I might cover that in a little while, but it's a little bit uh, trickier to deal with when, you, um, w when, you're, de when you're developing the software because it, it, it basically hangs if you run it from um, if you run it from the debugger, so um, it's uh, or from from Blitz environment, it's fine when you compile it, but you know it, it just makes it a little bit awkward for when you're developing stuff. But um, this is this is the Blitz way of doing it. It doesn't follow the standard Amiga DOS rules. It's a bit more like um, it's a bit more basic than that. Um, so, but I'll show you, I'll show you what it does anyway. So let's let's run this and see what happens. Uh, let's switch on the debugger. Oh, switch on the debugger. Let's go. Zero arguments found, and that is with a space. And you know what? Just for shits and giggles, I'm going to do it this way. Uh, because I, I'm fussy about things, these things. And it annoys the hell out of me to see something that says one arguments or one one items or you know with the s in brackets something like that. it's like two lines of code to make it actually work with different context you know 
and go up. There you go. So zero arguments found, and then if we give it an argument, uh, it should say one argument found. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what this is. So I'll show I'll show you how it works now. So there, we're running it from here, and you can like because we're running it from the compiler, we can't really uh, you know we're not an entering an argument, but there is actually a way of doing that. And so if you go to um, this option here, set CLI arguments, you can actually give it. So uh, if you wanted to give it a file name as the first argument. You can do that and you can set that. And now what we'll do is let's compile it and see what happens. Non-existent parameter, oh, okay. So if we check what i is, i is one. i minus one, okay, so it actually doesn't use zero. Okay, right. Well, that would have been a hard crash with the debugger. So uh, there we go, good catch. So one argument found, and look, we don't have our S there. Very important. So, and the, the argument is found RAM test. Okay. And then we can, let's just to give it a slightly more functionality. Oh. So just so we can give it a list of file names and it will tell us whether they exist or not. Very simple. Um, but just to give it an actual, um, just give it an actual function. Well, yes, this, this, you're, you are right. And I, that, I did kind of touch on that earlier. So there is another way of doing it and it's read. The, there's a function within DOS, which is read args. And that, that's where, you know, when you have a, when you look at the help of a, of a command and it, it has like a, it gives you a template, a command template, and it kind of tells you the arguments that are possible and the type of arguments, whether it's a switch, whether it's mandatory, you know, whether it's a, num a numerical one or, you know, different things like that. The, that is quite a cool system that's built into Amiga DOS. This, uh, I'll show you how to do that now in a minute. Uh, but, but yeah, I, there is a way of doing that, but it doesn't play well with the, with the actual with actual with the with the blitz environment so you have to kind of do it a little bit differently but i'll show you yeah exactly exactly so uh that that kind of that kind of template stuff and it is quite cool it lets you set the template and it does read it like that which is um yeah which is very nice but uh, yeah i'll show you that now in a minute but first off this is the simp to be honest it's a little bit a little bit more complicated but this is the simplest way because it's sort of it's a little bit more intuitive if you're not familiar with amiga dos Okay, so one argument found. Why didn't it do anything for i equals one? Oh yeah, so. I'm just gonna skip a line. Now, unlike other basics where you can just do a print to skip a line, uh, we're gonna, you have to give an argument so you can just give an empty string in Blitz Basic and that skips a line. So you can see one argument found, RAM test. So we, so then we can change that and, uh, uh, let's see, uh, one that I know that works. So syspress.info should work. So we've got two arguments there now. Uh, let's see if that works. So two arguments found, RAM test doesn't exist, so it doesn't say anything and then sysprefs.info file exists. So now we know. The, by the way, the exists function just gives a true or false based on whether the, uh, whether the, the, the file exists. Bear in mind, it gives a false, I'm pretty sure, if it's a directory. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna test that now. Um, so sysprefs.info obviously is a file, it's an icon file with sysprefs. And this will probably give a false. Oh no, it does, it does, it does exist. Okay. Um, hmm. I don't know why I thought that now. Possibly if you use the uh, the dot library function, it doesn't, it does, it comes back as not existing. 
but anyway there we go so you can um so that's that that's very it's very simple number of parameters and then you go through uh it's, it's kind of like a sort of a a built-in array called parse string but you have to make sure you don't access a parameter that doesn't exist because if you do it'll crash so while the debugger caught that there if you compile it into a standalone program it'll fall on Zars and that'll be that so what what I'll do is I'm going to make a, a standalone program and we can we can run it and see what happens ram disk and we're going to call it uh uh yeah yeah arg test okay so now our program is in there and if we run it nothing happens which is fine we don't want anything to happen it should just exit and you know nothing happens because we've got wb startup in there but if we go here and we go to the ram disk and we open a shell and we go arg test zero arguments found arg test Test. See, okay, so it checks those two, and our test exists. So there we go. That's the ve that's very very simple argument um, reading. Now the the problem with this is it doesn't support templating. So uh, if we do a question mark here, it 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 actually treats the question mark as a thing. It's just very it's very dumb. It, no, it, no, it's no, there's no real sort of intelligence to it or no real kind of, uh, yeah, logic to it. Okay, it just literally takes each argument and puts them in an array. Simple as that. So, um, uh, yeah, so, so, yeah, so that's, let's, let's look at the next way of doing it. And like I said, this, this is a little bit funky, so uh, I just, just bear that in mind. Um, what we're going to do is we'll save this as a new file and start up test two and this one will be using the other argument system so number of parameters uh uh no it's arg count oh no um it's read it read args read uh. Yes, it is. And this one, I'm pretty sure you give a template, okay? So now, so this is in the third party library. Ooh, I'm gonna go and talk about them now in a little while. But you can see here, it's in the Loten, Loten args lib, which is a special library that gives the read args functionality to Blitz. Okay, so the read args functionality, I'm gonna go and show you some examples in actual Amiga DOS. So if we go to, for example, edit pad, that opens the editor. Okay, but if we do edit pad question mark, see we get this uh, template. That's a template, so we can see that the, the file here is just a file name. You know, it just tells you, it's just telling you that's, you know, give it the name of the file. Pub screen is a keyword. You, you know, you tell, you, that means that it's a, it's a keyword means that uh, you, it's, you, you give it the keyword and then you give it an argument. So, uh, so you would say, pub screen equals workbench or pub screen equals my screen or you know something like that uh, create icons is a switch and fix font is a switch so a switch is just on or off so create icons if it's there it's true if it's not there it's false so kind of like a tool type in that way so the, yeah in, in in essence a lot of these are like tool types and i we covered tool types the other day didn't we yeah i think we did but um yeah so um Hmm. Oh, that really is nice. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. So, um, yeah. So that. So you understand what the template is. So we can do. Hey, Litwarski. How are you? Good evening, sir. Um. Yeah. How are you? Hope you're well. Um, so uh, what we're doing here is uh, some more general Blitz basic stuff, but at the moment we're working on taking arguments from the command line. So you, for if you want to make a command line program, so I'll give a little shout out to the uh, to the Amiga Tool Jam because oh, where's my mouse pointer? 
Um, um, so this is the, you know, I'm kind of doing these with the tool jam in mind because it's not specific to Blitz Basic, but it's a jam that's uh, out there at the moment for uh, a competition for making non-games, for making tools for the Amiga. Um, and so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm covering a lot of stuff in Blitz that can be used for that, but obviously you can use C or whatever other languages you like. But um, I'm fine. Um, <laughs> Excellent. Cool. And cheers. But uh, yeah, so I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm great. Thank you. I finished work today for a couple of weeks, so I am, uh, I'm in holiday mode. And um, yeah, so I'm enjoying a little glass of wine. And, um, and a lovely evening. I was out cutting the grass after work and it's, oh, this is, it's a, it's a great evening. <laughs> but um, yeah, okay, so, so, okay, so we know what the, um, um, yeah, so if we, we get the arguments there, we can do, and okay, can't open the file. So if we, but we can save as, Ram test. You see, and it has the, it remembers the argument there. So now, if we go and uh, edit pad, and you get the idea anyway. Okay. So right, so we know we know what these are doing. So these are these are basically arguments that can be put in there. They're they're optional, so we can we can do. Um, and we can just do the do the switch there, and you can see it's. Uh, it's used like an eight by eight font or whatever it is, uh, just to make everything lined up uh, in columns. So, you know, so that's what that's what the switch does, and you can see there it's using a, a proportional font now. But yeah, so a switch is just sort of a true or false thing, um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a template and we're going to do uh, something similar like file and um, hmm uh, like I don't know. I'm just making things up now new switch and count oh. so we can give it up to three parameters none of them are mandatory um, you can you can say something's mandatory by adding slash a to it. Um, so file new count are all there. Okay. Okay. So now, so this one works slightly differently. It gives you the uh, it, well, it actually works quite similarly. Sorry to be honest, but it handles all the templating for you, which is quite nice. Now from memory it also gives you it also does the wb startup stuff and that's that's necessary because of how it handles the arguments uh, I, i'm just going to check that now no, don't use free args don't uh, uh, uh. Hmm. and then, there you go you get your uh, explanation of the templates there it's quite cool um Oh, it doesn't actually say about it. Well, we'll try it. We'll, we'll, we'll leave it in there anyway and just see see what happens. Um, and so power count doesn't really make a difference anymore because read args, I don't, I think, just gives you back a true or false. Okay, so, so basically it gives you a pointer to the structure. Oh, Ian, there we go. Uh, structure is here. So... But yeah, it'll give a zero if there if it can't read the arguments. Okay, so we'll keep that open just there in the background. Um, so um, uh, let's see. Okay, if. Give the old style message. Okay, so 
So if, if you know, so basically, if the, if, the, if the struct doesn't exist, then you don't try and read it. Bad idea to read a struct that doesn't exist. Don't don't do it. Uh, okay. And uh, let me see. So now, the, what happens here? This works slightly differently. So it does kind of set up an array, and it's a CRG array. Um, but that array is basically zero one and two so it has the exact number of elements that are in the template okay um strings and things like that are pointers most of the most of the things are pointers so it's a pointer to a string pointer to a list um and uh but switches aren't a pointer they're just a true or false value so so file would be uh so we're going to just have a look at that string. So uh, yeah, we use peak string to get that string at that at that uh, the from the first argument. Uh, and we just print out whatever value. So that'll be a switch. And I think the value might be. Is it a pointer or is it a? I can't remember. Let's try. Let's try it as a pointer. Anyway, um, now the problem is, I think this library doesn't like uh, running from the running from blitz because it just it just doesn't really know how to handle the. The, the startup code so we're going to compile it and hope for the best um, it's very simple Shit, there isn't really anything that should cr uh, crash there or extract okay so let's create an executable arg test 2 and now we're in ram aren't we let's see if this crashes new zero okay so first argument is a null string so it's a blank line Second argument is not set to zero, and the third argument is zero, so it defaults to zero when it's. Uh, oh, well, that could be a pointer as well. So let's find out. Arg test two. Let's give it a file name. Are we, are we going to call it say new? And six. Okay. <laughs> so that's clearly a pointer because that is not six. It's a pointer to six. So let's try that again. Uh, we're in, uh, so we're going to have a, uh, a peek into memory at that address now instead. Oh, I'm after running it from the bloody bah. See, this is what I mean. It's after freezing there. Oh, sometimes. See, now, this may have corrupted memory, so I'm in anticipating a crash any moment now because it's after giving a... that. Uh, oh, yeah, it's the self... Um, you, you can get this the your own executable name as well. I'll, I'll, I, that's a fair point. I'll mention... I'll look that up now in a second. I, I'm sure there's a way of doing it. But argument zero isn't the executable name. It's um, There's a separate command for getting that. But um, yeah, so that's so yeah, so uh, I'm after I'm after possibly corrupting memory there. Anyways, let's compile this. Uh, create minimize executable. So now, our test two RAM test new six. Okay, there we go, and now we've got our six back. So we, new minus one is the internal value for true. And or, or, but basically any non-zero value will do it. Um, but that's what you get with, from a, from most blitz commands. And there's our path name that we gave it. So there we go. Um, if you look at it, when we don't give it the new keyword, we just give it six. You see, it's intelligent enough to know that you still meant the n number argument to be six and new is false. And you can change the order then. 
you see so even though inside the program it's rigidly argument zero one and two the dos this is it you know it's very clever this is what dos does and the the, the whole read args system in dos it sorts this out now that's uh i think kickstart two and up so that's not going to work on kickstart one which is why you have the older system that blitz gives you because a lot of the blitz stuff is basically um the the core libraries are kickstart one compatible and it's only sort of the extension libraries and a couple of libraries that are uh, kickstart two and stuff but the, yeah the, so the third party libraries tend to use kickstart two and give it more modern features so but there you go so um you know does that make sense Everyone happy with that? I'll take that as a yes. But um, yeah, it's just kind of annoying that um, you need to, uh, if you run it from the actual, from actual Blitz, that it kind of crashes and hangs. Yeah, it does absolutely. It's, it's a very cool system. So what I usually do is if I'm running it, if I'm debugging it, I'll have to give it some default values. So, um, what I'm going to do instead is call it. So we're going to give these, arg, you know, into actual variables. New, oh, okay. And then so It'll always give a long view, or a, a long, a long word as a result. Even if you kind of, even if you're only going to have a small number, like a, you know, a, a, like a, a, an int or a word or something like that, or a byte. It, it. So you, sh you should always peek it as a long, and then you can deal with that afterwards if you need to. So count dot l. Uh, so now we've got our three things, and what we'll do is we'll we'll print them. So we'll print them down here. Um, you can, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll cover that well. Actually, that's a good question. Um, I'm gonna get to. I'm just gonna recreate this down here so I can actually deal with the arguments. Um, all right, what do we do? Ugh. And then oh my god it's not the wine it's just i think i'm just like i've had a long week <laughs> okay um I think that's what we wanted, but what? Well, yeah, why did I do that now? What was I gonna do? <laughs> but anyways, oh yeah, yeah. Sorry. Um, what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna show you how to bypass this, just in case you're running it from Blitz. So, so first off, I, uh, I think it's, I think it's from Blitz. Yeah. So, and that's another third-party library. So if what we'll do is. Um, so you have to give it arguments manually and so you can you do it you can do it this way for debugging then you delete all this stuff when you're finished you know but um and oh that's the new flag and then what are we doing um Okay, so we give it some manu we manually give it some uh, arguments, and then if it's not running from Blitz, we can do all this stuff. Okay. So what'll happen is that should work from here. See, we get our default 
arguments to test with. And if we compile it, it will work from the shell as well. Uh, arg test two. So obviously that'll give you the same things. Not new. There we go. Okay, so we're getting we're getting our arguments there, and it's where it works in both environments. So you just have to work around that little quirk there. Um, okay. So uh, yeah, so that's it. So now we can now we can look at if it's running from the workbench or from the shell. So uh, what we can do is oh yeah, and we I, do we need WB startup? Let's have a look. No, we don't need WB startup. I, I'm sure. Yeah, I, I know it wasn't in the help file there, but running that doesn't crash, which means it has the WB startup code in it, which is fine. Okay, so now, now we have that. What we'll do is we can just check if, uh, I think it's from CLI. Yeah, so that just, that's as simple as that. So, um, so it'll give you true. Uh, I think that display will disappear because you have to manually open a console window to do that. And I don't really know how to do that. <laughs> okay, so it runs from there. That actually reports that it came from the from the shell because everything in Blitz kind of thinks it's coming from the shell with the arguments, but the, the startup code doesn't work uh, with the with read args. Okay, so um, Uh, but yeah, so let's create an executable and have a look at that. So if we run it from there, nothing happens. It does print, but it prints to the current output stream. And if you that, if you don't have a, sh a shell window open, it just disappears into the ether, so it doesn't exist. So yeah, so that's that's it. You can open a shell window. I I'm not entirely sure how to do it, other than you know you know actually actually calling the calling the console window. Uh, DOS call. I'd have to look that up. So we, we, yeah, we, we leave we leave that for now. But if we run it from the shell, we can see run from CLI is there. What we'll do is we'll change that to um, a requester. Yep. Yeah. Spelling. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <coughs> oh God, watch now, I'll have a massive cold for my holiday. Excellent. <laughs> okay, so test, run from workbench. And so, the, so if we run it from workbench, it'll open a requester instead, so Run it from the shell, we get our arguments, we get run from CLI, and if we run it from workbench, hmm. Um, now, what's going on here? Oh, I think we may have to uh, assign it to a screen. Um, let's try that. Yeah, so you have to you have to have a, uh, a an active screen for the for requesters to work like that. Okay, so now we can see it runs from Workbench. That's awesome. And runs from the shell. So that's that's so you can tell there. Um, you can get the Workbench arguments. Hmm. 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 I'm gonna see if it works. Um, let me see. Um, uh, 
da, 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 da. Oh, we put this down here. And so, because we're, instead of taking arguments the way nprint does, which will perfectly well handle numbers or strings uh, or, you know, variables or what, you know, number variables, string variables, when you're adding, when you're doing it like this, you're adding strings together and it only works with strings or you'll get a mismatch type error. So, when you want to add a number into that, you have to use str string function, which will give you, which returns basically the string version of that number. And again, do we do this? And oh, we don't need two of them. One of them is a new line. So um, let me see what's the last one. Count. Ooh. Dum dum dum. Oh yeah, I'm exactly what I was saying. And that's our function, hopefully. Let's try that. So it compiles anyway. Um, any limits to the args you have? <sighs> Probably. I don't think there's a significant limit, but there might be something like a 256 character buffer. Um, that kind of limit tends to crop up quite a bit in terms of the DOS library. I think you'll likely end up with something like that, a limit of 256 characters rather than an actual number of um, arguments. It could be, I don't, I don't, I honestly don't know, um, but it'll be down to the read args, whatever way the re read arg struct works and whatever way, you know, whatever internal way that works in DOS library. I've never come across a limit. It's going to be, it's more than you're going to realistically need unless you're doing something crazy. You're gonna have a hell of a template. Now there is something something you should bear in mind that the string buffer in Blitz by default is 10K. So your template here can't be more than 10K. So that's gonna limit things. Now still, if you've got a 10K template, that's gonna flood the screen with arguments. There's something, something deeply wrong with your program design there. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it there it, you know there are, I'm sure there is a limit. I don't know what it is. Yeah. But um, yeah, there, are, you're 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 right. There probably is a number of uh, a limited number of bytes. I I think 256 bytes because I know that's kind of the limit for like path lengths and uh, things like that to do with the file system. It's a good question. It's a good question. Um, I don't really feel like testing it because it means, you know, <laughs> it means making a lot of arguments because, you know, it, it is a high number, a high number of arguments. But um, anyways, um, let's see. So this should, um, this should give us arguments if it goes from Workbench, but I don't know if it actually works with Workbench arguments because they're handled a little bit differently. Let's try it and see anyway. Uh, let's create the executable. Arc test two. Arc test. Oh, arc test two. Run from workbench. Awesome. File. Okay, so these are kind of random numbers. Uh, if you duplicate an argument, I have no idea. Do you mean at the command line or in here in the template? Uh, I'm going to try it here. 
So we've got two new switches. Um, still works. Um, well, okay, still compiles. Uh, let's com create that executable. So it says not new. Um, still reads fine. Um, so either or. So it just works. Which is kind of cool. Um, I'm going to see what happens uh, because we haven't actually tested it. Um, God, let's see if it works with that. Okay, compiles fine. Uh, da, da, da. So it's giving false for that. It's giving false the second time. So it reads the first version of it and the second one is ignored. So um, there's your answer. <laughs> Every day is a school day. I. I didn't know how that would handle that, but that's cool. So, cool, excellent. Uh, there we go. Um, right. Get rid of that. We don't need that there. And so... We're back to where we were. Okay, now let's see. Are there any libraries for doing net stuff with Blitz? There are for Ami Blitz, not for Blitz 2, as far as I remember. Um, but you can use any C library that you want. So you could, in theory, use uh, BSD socket library. It's an absolute faff if you're doing a lot of stuff with a C library in Blitz, but it is doable. You might as well do it in C. You know, it'll probably be less less of a headache if you do it in C. So I would recommend against it. But if you're using AmiBlitz, there is a, a basic, um, there's an include for doing TCP stuff. And um, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Nobody's, no, nobody has any time for faff these days. Too old for that shit. Um, yeah, that's that's what I was just going to try, Javier. Um, the um, uh, yeah, see if this works with it, with uh, uh, run from workbench file now. See, yeah, this gives weird results, and the I think that's because the struct doesn't exist. So new is a, supposed to be a flag, so it's either supposed to be minus one or zero, and it's given minus sixty eight. So that's a random memory read. Um, let's see if we hold down that and we go, da, 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 or we hold down that, go da, da, run from workbench. See, it's given the same thing, so it does not understand it. It hasn't given the file name. There are there is a separate way of doing that, and you see when you have uh, from CLI, then we can get the arguments from here. Let's say. Um, Oh, I think it's in the same library. Let's have a look at the documentation for this library. So, um, read args is in the Loten args lib. So we're going to do a shift help to get this page up. And let's have a look at this argument. Look, we've got wb arg and wb args. And these look suspiciously like that. Um, there is a chance of doing a... a a networking thing um, it's a slim chance because I haven't done it myself and so I I'm deeply unfamiliar with it so I you know even even stuff that I've done before sometimes fights me so much on on a stream that I'm just like oh this is just horrendous <laughs> so uh, I don't bother um, so not having actually used it myself I'm not going to uh, uh, you know I'm not going to commit to something like that until I've actually a bit of experience on my, under my belt yeah, well, you know what? I've had loads of ideas for network games and um, 
not uh, not actiony kind of games, but like board game kind of games. And I really, really want to do them. And I want someone basically to pay me a full time wage so that I can give up my job and make <laughs> make shitty games and, you know, program for super niche stuff. And that's the dream. No, no, no one's going to do that. Um, so I'm, I'm waiting on my wife to get rich and famous, basically. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's it's the dream, isn't it? But um, you know, like I I married my wife, and uh, I told her I'm I'm marrying you because you're gonna get rich and famous, and well, she is a singer to be fair, so better chance than of getting rich and famous than I am, but it hasn't happened. I'm very disappointed. <laughs> no, it's uh, no, but it's 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 a long running joke with us. But uh, yeah, so unfortunately, I still have to keep my my day job, and I can't sit there coding network games that are going to be viewed by a few hundred people <laughs> what network pong i've had loads of, like oh you know obviously network connect four network you know uh otello or reversi as some people call it um all those games i've i've written all these games for um network atoms i've, I've written all these games for workbench in one player mode uh or you know in sort of like local mode uh, Settle the world. Now, there's that's a different story. That is actually absolutely epic. It's unbelievable, and I think, uh, yeah, I th I think that really could be done. Now, again, I haven't used the net library in Ami Blitz, so I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you. But we'll we'll, we'll we will look at that. You know what? I'm I'm going to look at the Blitz libraries. I'm going to look at the Blitz includes later on in the stream. So we will look at the net blitz and just, just out of curiosity we'll have a, or the net include and out of curiosity we'll see what's involved because it might, if it does a lot of kind of the lower level wrapping uh, packet handling and stuff like that, that would be cool. And you know, sort of if it's a relatively high level thing like, you know, kind of one step away from Arex, that would be awesome. I just don't, I don't know if that's the story, uh, but we'll, we'll have a look because um, I'm sure it has been used for something already. As in, you know, the the the, the guy who did um, a lot of the include work or one of the guys that did a lot of the include work is a guy called uh, De, De Vando. I'm going to I'm butchering that because I'm very rusty with my German, but um the wanderer basically in english but that's his name uh that's his online name and he um he he has done a lot of cool stuff and i'm nearly sure he's done something to do with networking with blitz he did hd rec in blitz and if you haven't seen hd rec it is phenomenal absolutely phenomenal and then you think jesus this was made in blitz it's unbelievable like it's a full kind of digital audio workstation package it, it handles MIDI, it handles sequencing to to an extent. It handles it has a built-in synth, has all these plugins. It is very cool. Um, um I don't know Extreme Violence actually. I'll have to look that up. But um, it's worth looking up uh, HD Rec just as an idea of what Blitz can do, if nothing else. But that's that's written by the guy, and I'm nearly sure he's done some network stuff. I'm gonna switch on the light here because it's starting to get dark. Ah, there we go. I am loving that wine. Not an alcoholic. <laughs> and okay. So yeah, so so we've got here we've got some WB args and WB message. Um, that also it gives us tells us if it's run from CLI or Workbench, which is cool. Okay, so it returns a pointer to the workbench message. And again, Ian, if you're still there, um, that would be a struct. Um, so we might have a look at that. Oh, no, not that one. This one. Uh, WB args. You know how many arguments are passed by the workbench. So this is the simpler way of doing it. So let's not look at the struct just yet. Um, this is a simple way of doing it. Uh, and here's where we have you. Here's here's where we're getting into it now. So the first argument is the program itself. 
There we go. So. <laughs> Ram disk test. That sounds familiar. Okay. So, uh, uh, wbargs gives you a number of arguments. So, you have to have two separate branches of code. One for if you start from shell and one for if you start from workbench. Okay. Uh, if from blitz. So, it... We'll get the from CLI thing here. Yeah, yes, basically, yeah. And yeah, that's this. This was um, this was bugging me. Just like you know, it was in the back of my mind. Like when I, that's why I had to look up the documentation at the start of the stream because I was like, I know it's not argc. Well, yeah, isn't it? I know it's not argc. I can't remember what the bloody thing is, so I had to I had to look it up. But um, yeah, there you go. Uh, okay, yeah. So basically, in this little branch here, we've checked if it's from the CLI. That can also mean if it's from Blitz. So we have if it run from Blitz, uh, we should just put that in. Okay, so we check if it's from Blitz, and if it's from Blitz, we fake the arguments here. And if it's not, we do read args there. Oh, we should do it here. So if and this one here. So the code's getting a little bit branchy, a little bit nested. So we'll we'll indent that stuff. So nice little feature of Ambiblitz. I don't can't remember if Blitz Basic does as well, but I think it does. If you hold down Control left and right, you can indent your code. It's nice. Uh, okay, so now we know we're definitely running from Workbench and not from Blitz. So here we're going to do uh, uh, oh well, let's do. Yeah. And that's it, that's it, simple as that. And then we're gonna build up a string and we're gonna include all the arguments in it and we're gonna leave it as a, as a requester. Um, okay, so we're going to do test and then we're going to do arguments. So we're going to get rid of all that stuff because that's not relevant anymore. So if we run it from workbench. We're going to do so we're going to do a request and the arguments are going to we're going to lift off list off the arguments on the next line uh, to our count and then close close the loop there and then we're just going to add on add our string together so let me see so args plus all right now do we use zero or one to start with i can't remember let's have a look do we be arg wrg zero is the program itself okay so yeah wrg isn't to uh, tokenizing there so wrg there's a few things like that in the documentation where it's slightly you know i'm going to call it boogie documentation because there are some issues with it but uh, yeah so wrg isn't the command and wrg is so that's a, that's our function it acts like an array
and starts at zero. So we're gonna do that and So if we're not on the last argument, we're going to add that to it. So we get a new a new line, but only uh, only if it's not the last argument. We don't want to have a blank line underneath all the time. OK, so now let's compile that and see if it works. Works. We get our, our dummy arguments. Let's create an executable. And let's run it and see what happens. Run from workbench arguments. OK, first argument blank. Why are you blank? Ah. Oh. Why blank? Why blank? Test from around this. Args minus one. Arg count. Okay, it's telling me it should be minus one, but uh, I don't really get that. Um, let's see. Zero, one, two, three. So zero. And then one argument and two arguments, three arguments. Seems strange. Oh. No, I'm starting at one. Hmm. I'm going to start at zero. And try it that way around. Shouldn't make a difference, really. But let's see what happens if we uh, if we run it like that anyway. So we're going to give we're going to give it the argument arg test. Run from workbench arguments. No argument. Hey, Proton Fig. Hello. How are you? Welcome along. Welcome along. I'm going to pour myself a new glass of wine. Cheers and welcome in. How are you? Um, we are doing a bit of coding. We're doing some um, bits basic, getting some arguments. From um, from the shell, which we've done successfully, and from workbench, which is not going so well. Um, yes, guten Abend, Abend, Schkol. Ah. Um, and yes, so it doesn't seem to be working. Run from workbench. Arguments blank. Let's see if we double click that. Run from workbench, arguments, still blank. Hmm. Arg count WV args. So. So we know we're not running it from Blitz. So, and it's not from CLI. So we should be getting arg count. I'm going to just... And move this down to here just to make sure that bit is being called uh, why that's fine 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 now and uh, let's compile that Minimized executable. Let's run you here. Arg zero. Arguments fine. Kind of what we expect. Argument zero is our still given arg zero. It's the right way around, is it? Yeah. That arg zero. It's not working. Not working. Why is that? Arg count WB args. What am I missing here? WB args will at least return one, never zero, because there's always one argument past the path name of your program. Now, 
Maybe it's icon stuff. Uh, it shouldn't be because you know the, the default icon should be there. Uh, it should uh, should work fine. Um, WRGs will at least return one. So. Hmm. Let's see if. So this do even message is um, in that same library. I wonder if you need to actually call it before you read the parameters. So it compiles okay. Let's uh, create an executable arguments. So that code is not being called. So wb message. Is not being called. Why? Return zero if your program started from the shell. Otherwise, return a pointer to the workbench message. So. It well, uh, no. That the struct, I can't remember what the workbench startup struct is. Uh, compiler settings. Miglibs. Well, see, I'm already, I'm already after checking that with the from CLI. I wonder if that's robbing Okay, yeah, I wonder if that's stealing it from that. Yeah, well, yeah, I know it's, it's a little bit spaghetti-ish, but I should already be doing that because from CLI is doing the same thing, essentially. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swap it round and say, uh, I wanna find the struct, the, the, uh, the WVARG struct, okay. So, Type in the wrong window. So we're going to set up a pointer to the arguments struct, and then we're going to have a look at it because I want to see what's going on. Equals. Uh, let's do that at the start. That's ba that should basically this. Yeah. Yeah, that should basically be the same thing. If message equals zero, um, yeah, yeah. It's, it, it, well, it, it doesn't work quite like that because the DOS um, arguments thing doesn't return the just doesn't return your own path or it doesn't return your own program name. But it does in Workbench, or it should in Workbench. So. Um, Uh, let's see. This should be basically be the same thing. Uh, okay, let's delete that. If run from CLI or Blitz. Uh, From Blitz, let's just make sure that's working. Uh, run from CLI, from Blitz, okay, yeah. Okay, so if we don't get a workbench message, that must mean it's in CLI. And then we get our args from there, which is fine. That's We know that's working. Then this has to be from workbench. But let's have a let's just have a look and see. Hey, one argument. <laughs> Round disk arg test two. There we go. 
okay so you have to use its own you have to call wb message first you can't use the blitz internal library ones okay well there you go so lesson learned so wb message handles all that stuff and that's what you need to use instead of wb startup to do that okay so now we've got our struct uh, i again i don't know if he's still in the chat but let's have a look at what's in there wb arg we can go in there and the lock which is presumably the your own program and the name which is a pointer to the string so that's that's it that's all it is um slightly annoyingly when you do this in the browser in the definition browser here when it gives a pointer to a string it, it lists it as a byte type now you'll see that the offset it, it, you can't tell here obviously because it's four bytes off and that's the long but if there are more parameters after that or more fields after that you can see that it's four bytes so it's like it's definitely not a byte it's four bytes and it's 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 a string pointer basically short answer mm -hmm. yeah yeah so uh yeah a lock a lock yeah is it sort of a yeah a, a structure that contains a bit of information about what you're dealing with on the yeah in the file system but um yeah okay so that's fine um it seems like it's working now so let's 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 give that a go again let's see if we if we run that with another argument we should get two two arguments arg test arg test yes so we can do that 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 loads of arguments there you go all working beautiful so you run it from that if you run it from the shell it just works as it was run from cli cool arguments are all working it is slightly different to how it's handled in c of course um and uh, yeah sorry about the it, it took a little bit of faff to get there but we got there we got there and um uh, yeah okay so um, oh, excuse me. So that's arguments. I uh, done that. That's kind of what I wanted to cover um, from a previous stream, and I just not, kind of never got around to it. So I've kind of I've, I've done the bit that I want to do. Now I'm going to go through various third-party libraries and kind of just just do a bit of a, a quick look in them. Not in any huge depth, but um, I'll show you the, the ones I'm more familiar with. Obviously, I'll be able to talk about more, but. You know, because people were asking about it and like, you know, how do you know what that's there and stuff? And I wanted like, really, I don't accept that I explore the documentation. So I'll go through that and I'll go through the uh, the Blitz, the AMI Blitz includes. And and we'll have a look at that. So uh, for this, I'm going to open a new a new file. Uh, yeah, fine. OK. <clears throat> oh, we've got a help file open behind there. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm, I'm not used to working on such a uh, low resolution screen, but I, I'm doing it for you guys. I'm doing it for uh, for the love of the stream because, you know, if I was running this in a dirty big resolution, it'd be quite hard to read. Okay. So, oh, I should I should uh, m mention as well, that, you know, thank you very much everyone for the, all the follows and stuff for that. Um, it's awesome. <laughs> uh really appreciate it and uh you know i was just looking at stats there a while ago and i'm like oh this is really cool it's really cool and especially the people who've uh you know i'm absolutely not doing it for the for the follows or for the for the money or anything like that but there's a few people have have um subscribed and stuff like that and i'm like jesus what, what are you doing why why but I, I got my first payout and <laughs> it goes some way to offsetting the credit card bill that i ran up at the kickstart show <laughs> so greatly appreciate that it wasn't like you know i'm obviously not going to retire yet or anything like that but um you know i you know i appreciate it and thank you very much uh, you know you, you you bought me a few pints of kickstart and i appreciate that thank you cheers guys <laughs> no I'm, I'm i'm here to hang out for the chats and you know that's you know that's it i i, I enjoy this because i think Blitz is very underappreciated. Not even underappreciated. It's, you know, it's kind of almost unknown. And, you know, there, there are loads of people 
Oh no, it's all good, and I'm not. That's why I'm not in it for the money. That's not at all, not at all. Don't worry about it. And I'm delighted. To, I'm delighted to have company here, or otherwise I'd be talking to myself, you know. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, it's it's it. I, you know, it's it's kind of. I know there are a lot of people out there who are just kind of like getting back into programming now. They have a little bit more time, and uh, you know, and and doing these things, doing these jams and whatever. Um. You know, it's 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 quite cool, and you know, I'm I'm just I'm just happy to be able to help out with that. But um, to that to that uh, end, there is the Tool Jam um, Discord. There's also the Blitz Basic Discord, um, and uh, yeah, go and join them because I'm I'm on them, and I will help out when I can. Obviously, obviously, you know, I have I have a life and I have a job, and so I'm not on it all the time. But I'm on it whenever you know, whenever I'm quiet. And I'll, I'll, you know, help out people when I can. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah. Th cheers. I appreciate that. And it was, it was, it was nice to meet you, uh, Amiga Bill's illegitimate son, <laughs> in in the flesh, as it were. Um, there are a lot of people there that I kind of thought, oh, you know, I'll, I'll go and talk to them later, or I'll talk to them tomorrow and stuff like that. And then they weren't there. And I was like, oh, it's it's tough. But yeah, I think I think it's, it was worth doing for the weekend. Um, but you know, I, pr I appreciate the comments. Thanks, guys. Love it. And I love the wine too. It's a Ryaka. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of a Ryaka. Um, there you go, Spanish wine. <laughs> oh, yeah, I saw that. And um, yes, I appreciate that. And I, like, I, I, I just plain don't have the time to edit videos properly. It's you know I've I've done a little bit of that in the past, and I'm just yeah no this is too much too much time. I don't have enough time to do that. So I will apologize here and now for the long rambling streams. And if you're watching them on YouTube, it's probably quite boring when you're not in the chat. <laughs> I'm sorry, and you know I don't have the time to go through it and cut it into the highlights or anything like that. But um you know I appreciate you watching anyway. Um, yes, um, no, Kickstart was awesome. It really, really was. And it was great to meet so many people. Zuperdan was there, uh, Mass was there, a few other people were there from the from the Blitz Basic Jam last year. And you're like, what the hell? All these, these you know, meeting all these people, it was it was cool. It was, um, a weekend wasn't long enough. Although, you know, my, my liver and my wallet disagree. <laughs> it was plenty long. <laughs> But anyways, oh uh, yeah, no, I, 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 I got what you meant. I got what you meant. All good. Um, okay. Um, now, but yeah. <laughs> uh, stream love done and dusted. Here we go. So what was I going to do? Oh yeah, yeah, we're going we're going to look at the the third party Blitz libraries. So in Blitz Basic, if you have the manual, if you look at the manual, I have it here. I have my original one that I bought in whenever it was, 1998 or something like that. Um, <laughs> it was a whole weekend of that, wasn't it? It was kind of like, oh, I'll, I'll come back and I'll, I'll talk to them when it's quiet, and it never was. And uh, that's it. I did manage to talk to Dan for a while and uh, and and Mass, and it was lovely to meet the two of you, but yeah, it just, it was it was just such a busy weekend, but it was great. But um, I'm trying to find a date for this. I cannot remember, but I think it was around 1997 or 1998 and I bought that. And that's a great manual. All the commands in there are the core Blitz libraries. Okay, they are the core, they're called the Acid Libs because Acid software. And okay, so there's a set of documentation for them. They are the core libraries. They're kind of like, they hold Blitz together. They give you, you know, they give you the basic libraries that are mostly compatible with Kickstart 1.3. So things like the file requesters, the um, the, the 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 argument handling that we handled that we looked at earlier in the stream, you know, all that stuff is kind of that's the core libraries, and it's enough to get you going. It's enough to kind of make a competent program, but it doesn't use some of the nicer features like uh, like. Uh, read args and other kind of cool features like that, GAD tools and things like that. So, oh, oh no, it, it does have GAD tools in there, but yeah, so so it, it includes kind of just the core stuff. 
And if you use Blitz 2 from floppy disk, if you're on a particularly limited system and you're using Blitz 2 from floppy disk, that's all you get. But on the extras floppy disk and on this, the Blitz CDs, and especially if you have the Ultimate Blitz Basic CD, which is kind of like the most updated one, um, uh, I, I, I think I have a, a little command for that. Is that it? Uh, no, it's not actually. It turns out it's not. <laughs> I can't remember my commands anymore. Oh dear, oh dear. I'm just gonna look this up because I'm sure I have it. Uh, two seconds, guys. Don't go away. Yeah, 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 yeah. Log in, log in, log in. Um. Aha. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there we go. UBB. I would have been quicker typing that myself. But there's the um, the most up to date version of Blitz. So that's that's kind of a full CD image, and it has all the most up to date libraries, all the most up to date editor, debugger, all that kind of stuff. Because they were all updated quite a lot after the the after 2.1 was released. So when I got that, it came with like three floppy disks in a box. And I knew it was gonna be good because you know, you, you you weigh the box in your hands and you kind of feel, oh, there's a good manual in there. So, you know, I knew it was, I knew it was a good thing. But the basic, the, the first disk that you can boot from is basically a, a Kickstart 1.3 environment, just a minimal thing. And you get the core libraries and you get a very basic debugger, a very basic editor. All works under Kickstart 1.3. It's all a bit, shit basically you know if you can oh yes absolutely and it's a very good download if you can if you have a hard drive and you have extra ram and for the love of god why don't you in this day and age you know you're a glutton for punishment if you're still running blitz from a floppy disk these days basically that's it so you know if you can't afford physical hardware Use an emulator. Everyone can emulate. Everyone has it. Like you know, pull a pull a PC out of a bin somewhere, and it will be able to emulate an Amiga better than a one meg A five hundred. There you go. Um, so, um, but yeah. So even if you just have the floppy disks, the extras disk that comes with it has a better debugger, a better editor, better libraries, and it has a lot of third party libraries on it. So it's really worthwhile installing it to the hard drive because that's the only way you can get it to work because it's bigger than a floppy disk if you don't, if you, you know, if you need that. So yeah, so yeah, that's it. You need to install it on a hard drive, end of story. No getting around it really. If you're, if you're watching this stream, you have a device that can run that, you know, that can emulate an Amiga with a hard drive. So, you know, you've, you've no excuse. <laughs> but yeah, th that, that download is the ultimate version of Blitz Basic 2.1. It has all the latest versions of the libraries which have been updated over the years. It has it has some extra stuff. The editor has been updated several times. Blitz2000.co.uk is a website that from back in the day, it's it's you should have a look at it because it's clearly, you know, someone's still paying for the upkeep, but it is it has been around for 25 years. <laughs> uh, uh, Blitz 2000 uh, .co.uk I'm just making sure I have that address right oh don't tell me it's been taken down it existed forever and that was where all the latest kind of libraries and stuff were now they oh it looks like it's gone but you'll see it in um, archive.org and places like that but all of the kind of updates were there and they've all been combined into that link there the ultimate bit blitz basic plus cd so, you know, you can mount that in an emulator or you can burn it to a CD and put it on your physical Amiga if you have a CD drive. And I mean, if you have an Amiga, a physical Amiga that can take a CD drive, you probably should have a CD drive. Um, but yeah, there you go. Install that and that will uh, give you all the latest libraries, the latest debugger and all that kind of stuff. And you have no really, you've really no excuse for using anything less than that. Now, Ami Blitz 3 is a different story and Amiblitz 3 is here. And that is the open source version. 
Uh, and that is, I've linked to 3.9.2. It's actually on 3.9.9 these days. So, uh, but you'll find it if you go to the, uh, uh, to the Amiblitz on GitHub, you'll find it. That's what I'm using. In, my, in the emulator there, I'm actually using 3.8, so it's quite out of date. But this is a much nicer editor. It's got all these extra features. It's on a, on a real Amiga. It takes a little bit more hardware power. But on an emulated Amiga or an upgraded Amiga, it's fantastic. And I use it like on my real Amiga with RTG, and I use it at quite, high, quite a high resolution. Um, but it's so much nicer to use as an editor. Some people find it a bit crash happy, and there are some versions that are crash happy, but it's well worth it. It's well worth it, and it's it it's basically ninety nine percent compatible with Blitz two. Probably more than that, I would say ninety nine point nine percent to be honest, because you know very few of the commands have actually changed, and there are some extra commands, but you don't have to use them. So if you have code that works in Blitz two, it's almost certainly going to work in Ami Blitz three. Okay, well, there, there you go. So, um, um, 3.8, 3.9, I'm not entirely sure. There's a change log on the, um, on the GitHub page. Um, basically, I think 3.9.9 is the latest version. And they, there have been a lot of kind of stability fixes and just minor fixes. It's kind of, a, it's a lot of small stuff, but you know, I, I, I have, I have actually got 3.9 here, but I just know that 3.8 works. <laughs> so I know, you know, so that's why I've kept it where, where it is, you know, um, like I've, I've got a very fragile setup with 3.6 as well, which is an, obviously an older version. And that I ha I've kept that solely for, if you're familiar with it, the um, SMB mounter tool, because that compile is an awkward awkward compile and it only works on 3.6 just because of quirks with the editor because i actually load in uh it loads in text files that are wider than the editor can handle and it only works with probably dealing with uh probably dealing with you it's probably taking advantage of bugs in that editor to be honest <laughs> and so if i try to compile it with a later version it doesn't work so exactly so i have an environment just tucked away just for that <laughs> Um, not the way you should do things. I should probably fix the actual text file that's too long for the editor, but it is what it is. Anyways, yeah, so exactly. If, if, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Or if it is broke and you need that breakage, then there you go. But anyways, yeah, so I'm using that, but 3.9.9 is probably the one to go for if you're, use, if you're interested in Amiibus 3. And there are some pretty cool features that are much nicer. Okay, so... All that waffle out of the way, I'm going to talk about the third party libraries. So if you're installed to the hard drive, you should have these third party libraries available. The core libraries are, like I said, are all the commands that are in this. Um, they are also available in, if you have Ami Blitz 3, even if you want, if you, even if you intend to only use Blitz 2, you can probably download Ami Blitz 3 for, or get, or go to GitHub and just download the documentation because it's actually pretty cool. And I'll show you here. So it's in here and programming in Blitz. That is, I said it earlier, this is the Blitz Basic 2.1 manual in in, uh, in Amiga Guide format. So it's a nice little menu item in Ami Blitz 3, but if you download it and you can just keep it on your hard drive, it's a lovely reference. And you've got, these are all the, all the libraries that are part of the um, core libraries. The third party libraries aren't covered here. Okay. But they are called, but that, but basically that's it. And it also has the kind of like the introduction and how to, how to use a lot of the stuff. It, the, the, it's pretty decent for some stuff. It's pretty rubbish for other stuff. And you know, it's a love hate kind of thing. It could definitely be better, but I'm so used to the manual now. And I, cause I learned from the paper manual and you, you know, I've, it, my paper manual is like ha worn along the edge from thumbing through it so much. Like you know, I, I've gotten used to it. I know the sections that I need to look for, or that I need to go to, to look for things. Um, but um, yeah, so the, the whole manual is there. You can go and you can have a look at, so, you know, you can say here are the, or, you know, all the, the AREX commands um, and you can see them all there and they're all there. 
um, you can look at the, you know file handling commands and it's all all the sections are basically there there have been minor updates but it's a bit um the, yeah the, but it, it's still it, it it is a little bit uh it leaves a little bit to be desired like it's full of magic numbers you can see it there um instead of using operating system flags and values it just uses that um hmm now have you you I'm, I'm taking that you mean amiga os libraries and devices like device drivers and things like that you, there is a way in ami blitz not as far as i know in blitz 2. so yes yeah, so you can in ami blitz it has like I, I'm, I'm nearly sure there's a thing new shared library okay so you can go there and it's full of the macros that you need to uh, make a library. And basically what you do is you add functions in there like that. So you have to you have to do a little bit of faffing around, but you know, it's 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 doable. But the compiler knows about that in Ami Blitz. It doesn't in Blitz 2. And so it, you can, so basically if you want to do that kind of stuff, you need to do it in um Ami Blitz 3. And same with um in Blitz 2, you can you can put inline assembly in there. In Ami Blitz 3, you can do that with PowerPC code as well. So you can put inline PowerPC code. Now you have to you have to handle the assembly yourself. And I really I assemb I can sixty um, k assembly is uh, you know I can I can fumble my way through it, but I don't really I don't really go that low level to be honest. But PowerPC assembly I know nothing about. So. Yeah, I, I have never tried it, never even attempted it. But in theory, you can add uh, 68K assembly and PowerPC assembly into your libraries. And devices are basically just libraries with a specific setup. So I don't know if you can do it in AmiBits, but I'm sure, I'm, I'm fairly sure you can. Um, yeah, I don't see why you shouldn't be able to, because basically a device driver it's just a library that has certain specific calls and certain specific offsets, as far as I know. So once you craft it right, I don't see why it shouldn't work. But yes, it is doable with Ami Blitz 3, not with Blitz 2. Hmm. Um, but yeah, so there you go. Um, it might be possible to do a Blitz 2 if this is ported to Blitz 2. I don't really know. Um, I don't really know if that's doable, but maybe it is. You know, maybe it is. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so next I'm going to look at. Um, yeah, so yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm getting sidetracked here. So where was I? I was I was on the blank page and I was looking at this. So Blitzlib's guide. This is the next thing to look for. So this is this gives you three things here, right? Acid libs, def libs, and other libs. So acid libs, they are the core libraries that I was saying about before. They're the ones that are covered in the manual. I'm gonna pull it out again here, just because yeah. I like having the manual. Um slight side branch here, but these two books I also love. They're excellent. Um Amiga Shopper A-Rex Manual and Complete Amiga C from Future Publishing. Also Amiga Shopper actually. Both excellent books. That taught me C programming. I used that even when I was in college doing C programming for the PC. <laughs> and for for um, uh, microcontrollers and stuff like that. So I used that book and I brought that book into uni with me and it served me really well. Great book. You can probably find it online somewhere uh, as, a, as a PDF. Probably, <coughs> definitely. <laughs> but there you go. Anyways, yeah. So acid libs, that is. This is a nice, a nicely rearranged library. So it's not just like the um, manual. It has a little bit of extra detail in it, and it, it lists things by libraries. Mm. Yeah, and if you can find that book, uh, and I'm, I'm, you can definitely find the C book. On, there's a there's a there's a website that does um a lot of old Amiga manuals and stuff like that and it's, it's really cool some really cool stuff there and it's on there 
I've never seen the that A-Rex manual in PDF format and it is a really good book. It's a really good book. Uh, that taught me A-Rex and you know, and I still use it all the time. Spine's broken on it and worn out from it. But um Yeah. Um it like yeah, no, I'm, that's definitely I can't remember it, the website name now, but it shouldn't be too hard to find. There's a and it has loads of Commodore manuals like the it like like PDF versions or scan versions of the the ROM kernel manuals from the the workbench manuals, like a lot of the third party programming books from back in the day. Um and it's re it's a really cool, it's a really good resource. And that complete Amiga C is definitely on there somewhere. Excuse me. Okay, so these are these are the core libraries. So how how Blitz is arranged and how it works is that you you have command libraries. Every command is in a library. So some of them are absolutely key and Blitz just can't function without them. Like, you know, things like the if and go sub and for and all that kind of stuff. But so every 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 library is there and it's nice in Ami, Ami Blitz because you can also get the um, a library browser. So you can see here the commands. So a lot of these are um, basic. They're they're basically um, uh, 68k opcodes, or you know. So it's assembly assembly stuff, which is quite cool. And you can you know, and that's how you can include it in your code. But each library has, you know, a number of statement, a number, a number of statements or commands in it, and that's how it works. So you, you can see it here. But on Blitz two, you can't really browse the libraries like this. But there are tools for handling the libraries, and again, the ultimate Blitz Basic CD will have all them on it, or will have a library, a library handler on it that lets you browse these things as a separate program instead of within the interface. But um. Um, yeah, so the, you know, so each library has an ID, and within that ID, you've got each you've got the commands, and each command has an ID. You don't really need to know about that; just know that that it kind of that's how it works. So, you know, there are lots of different uh, libraries, loads and loads and loads of them here in Blitz Three. But the core libraries are, uh, let me see. Yeah, no, I can't. I can't list them by core libraries. But basically, the acid libs are these ones here, and they're 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 the core. Oh. Um, on later versions of Amiga OS, you can hold Shift and press that to maximize, and it's a nice feature. And I I miss it. I must I must upgrade this setup. But um, okay, so these are all the these are all the commands that are in the library in the um. I don't know why that one didn't work in the manual so you got the blit the blit lib um so you know we've got different commands for blitting there um graphics was the date lib so yeah so you can see here that, that you know there's all, all the sort of like the core commands and these are all in the library or in the in the manual that's fine um some of them aren't going to open of course because yeah they're just not there um the 3D lib, I've never actually really used this, but um, it's probably kind of slow, to be honest. Um, if you're going to do 3D stuff, you really want to optimize it yourself and be be good at that. But it, it's inter it might be interesting to have a look at all the same. Um, algorithm lib. See, yeah, a lot of these actually don't work, but um, the, the, the main commands that I recognize are, you know, are, are these key commands. And uh, so anim lib will let you like obviously, obviously render, render animations. The A-Rex library lets you, lets you use A-Rex and set up a, uh, an A-Rex port in your program. I've had better luck using the third party A-Rex library. And this is the thing. A lot of the third party libraries came about because um, the Blitz libraries were a bit a bit too basic or a bit too primitive or just didn't have enough features you know or whatever so but yeah there are um and the overview doesn't really give you much information but um yeah so so you know it's it's worth browsing this like seal uh brex lib the brex lib is um basically intuition events you can manipulate it lets you in, manipulate things like um so like record mouse movements and play them back and things like that 
it's quite interesting to look at or to yeah to use but it's, that's what i meant to click on so we were doing that earlier from cli numpars and oh power paths power path string so this was what we were looking for earlier javier so there's a separate function for it when you're using the old blitz commands and it's a parameter path So that's it the way. Okay, so. Aha, there you go. Yeah, so that is it. So there's, there's some stuff there about how to use it. But basically, we've done it a different way. But yeah, that's that's how it works. And you can get the program name from that. Um, yeah, all the original libraries are written in assembly. Or pretty much all of them, I'm sure. Um, by crazy people for Asset Software. But yeah, so the so how the how the commands work, essentially, if you include in your code any command from a library, that library gets tacked onto your executable, and it basically just calls that library from your code, if that makes sense. So it jumps into the it it, it attaches the entire library and jumps into that code whenever you call that command. So it's kind of kind of like a macro assembler. If that makes sense, it's like it's you know it's a, it's a fairly dumb compiler basically. But yeah, so that's that's the story there. Um, so if you just use the from CLI command there out of that library, the code for all of those will be added. Um, yeah, basically, yeah, it's it 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 handles the parameters and the registers and all that kind of stuff. So you do get a little bit of an overhead for that, and that's why Blitz is a little bit slower than C. It's, it runs at about 70% of the speed of equivalent code in C. So um, obviously it depends on what you're doing and it'll vary. Like if you're doing a lot of heavy blitting stuff, the gap is going to be much lower because you're just waiting on the blitter all the time. And the blitter is the bottleneck. But if you're doing a lot of calculations or a lot of disk accesses and things like that, you probably find that the code is about 70% of the speed of C. It is doing basically the same thing, but... A C compiler does a lot more, and C compilers are, especially modern C compilers, are they're a, they're a lot more intelligent than the Blitz compiler. So, so a C compiler will take this code and it will sub it into the program and it'll reuse it as it needs to. Whereas Blitz just takes this entire library, tacks it onto your executable, and gives and within your code wherever you use that command it does a jump to the library code which is a little bit different to how c works um so it it's less it doesn't really optimize that out so you, you still end up with a big chunk of code on the end of your program for these commands that you never used which which is why you get a massive executable and you know and you get an extra jump every time you can use a command or not every time but most times you use a command in, within a library, you, you you get an extra jump involved, and that's just it's just an extra CPU cycle or an extra few CPU cycles, an extra memory read. You know, it's it's small stuff, but it all adds up to be just a ticker, ticker overhead. Um, but yeah, so that but that that's how it works, and it's just once you know that, you kind of know that if you can get away with not using a command from a library, it'll save your executable the size of that library. Okay, so there are a few different uh, libraries here that are kind of kind of covered in the manual. And when you when you look at the manual, these are the kind of the all the commands. And I I'm not really going to go through these properly because really they're all in the in in the lib in the in the manual. And if you read through it, you'll you'll if you look you kind of look through the sections of the manual and say, okay, I need to handle something with bitmaps. You can find what all the bits to handle bitmaps. Um, what I will say, and I've said it before when I was doing the game streams, is there's display library and there's a slices library. Um, or screens library. Yeah, the, 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 it absolutely can. The, the manual is a bit shit, <laughs> to be honest, but um, it's still, at least you can find your commands and then you can kind of muddle through it.
Um, display user. Mm. Yes. Um, short answer is I do. <laughs> Long answer, and you're not going to like it. Is it's just it's it's complicated. Um, basically, the string you give it is a cop list, a copper program, and you need to do that yourself. So what you do is you, and it only gives a string basically for simplicity because a string is a handy way of passing a variable length bit of code. So it is assembly of a sort, but if you're, I'm, I'm not sure how much you know about the copper, but the copper is its own processor, essentially. And so what you need to do is you need, it only has, unlike the 68K, it only has like three or four different opcodes, different commands that you can give it, but they are very simple, very, and it's very powerful for doing copper stuff. And so you need to compile, you need to basically put that together yourself and you store each, each, each opcode is like a byte and a byte or each command is like a byte and a byte. So you get the, the, the command and the value that you're given that command. And so you put those two bytes in a string and then you to the, then the next command is two more bytes in the string and you, you build up your string like that. Don't think of it as a string of text. Just think of a string as a variable length kind of massive, you know, a string of bytes. So it, it does make sense to store it as a string from a from a code perspective, but don't let that kind of confuse you because when you see a string, you kind of think, oh, it's text. That's not, it's not, it's not opcodes. It's not like, uh, it's not mnemonics or anything like that. It's actual bytes, direct copper bytes. And I, you know, you, there are, there, yeah, you, there are plenty of tutorials out there on how to code the copper. And what you need to do is, you need to look at them because it's not easy. It's not, uh, certainly not for beginners. I'm not saying don't look at it, but I'm, I'm def definitely saying go and look at it and but just see what's involved. But all, all so the, that's all you're doing is you're basically passing the, passing the code to it. Yeah. Yes, an example. And I don't have an example ready to go. I would love to give you an example. Um, I don't have an example ready to go, but I'll, you know what, I'll dig one out. But it is um, basically, basically the commands are like, um, wait till line something and then do something else. And that's kind of almost always how the a copper list goes. So if you want to change color on a certain um, line, what you do is you tell it to wait until a certain line and then you tell it to write a certain value to a certain address and that's it. So you just have to know the addresses that you want to write to. So the palette registers or, you know, if you want to do um, like, uh, you know, sort of like, you know, uh, wavy patterns or something like that on the screen or scroll patterns, you need to do that. You need you need to um, you need to know the address for the offsets that you that you need. And they're they're custom custom chip addresses, but you you and you get your value. You write it to the address at a certain position on the screen, and that's all you have to do. You just have to build it up one at a time, one step at a time, and it's not difficult really. It's just it, it's it's not it's not simple either, you know. But it is it is doable, and you you can muddle your way through it. Um, but it's worth checking out that like Code Tapper website has some has some pretty cool stuff on all the different registers you could do because what what the copper will do is it will just write to an address when you tell it to, and that's it. That's pretty much where its power comes from because it will do that every time the display hits here, regardless of what your CPU is doing, regardless of what your code's doing, it will do that. Yeah. So th the thing is that Blitz handles cop the copper sort of tries to automate it for you. And that's where kind of some of the confusion comes from. So there are two different families of copper commands. Let's go and have a look at them, sure. Okay, so um, rest of the display lib. Okay, so display user and string and the offset. So the offset here isn't the screen offset, it's the offset in the cop list. Um, and it's, it's so to do to 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 explain that we need to go back to create display 
oh no, we need to go to init cop list, init cop list. And we see here, right? So see uh, num customs at the end here. Yeah, so what you can do is you can do trial and error and you can use a bit of dichotomy and just like give it a hundred bytes and then it'll, it'll, you know, if it works, then you know it's too much, you know, or, you know, you, if you get issues, try less because the debugger will always tell you when there's not enough. So you can, you can uh, chop and change there. But, um, okay, so the, the custom cop, the custom colors or num customs there, sorry, is the number of bytes to reserve on the cop list for your code. Okay, and it does have to be the right number. You can probably go a little bit over, but you shouldn't really. Um, and that's it. So don't mind this stuff here. Um, but what's important is there are two different families. There are two. Yeah, and I was, I was getting to that. There are two different families of commands. So we've got the custom commands and the display commands. Okay, and one of them gives you positive, you do a positive number of bytes in the num customs and the other you do a negative sign and you cannot mix them, obviously because they cancel each other out. So you cannot do them. You cannot do that, okay? You cannot mix them. So let's say you want to do a display rainbow. This tells you here that, um, so display rainbow is um, you do, your cop list, obviously, that's zero or whatever your your copper list is. Um, uh, register and palette is uh, you basically the data that you're you're thrown into the um, the palette. Okay, so register is the palette register is kind of confusingly. So if you want to change color zero, let's say, so display rainbow, you do cop list zero or whatever cop list it is register zero that's your background color and then palette is a palette object okay so that's all your different color values and that will write in yeah yeah pen thank you yeah <laughs> that's an easier way of saying it yeah so it's not it's, it's not quite the same thing but yeah basically it's a it's the pen and um, because the register that controls the currently active pen yeah so and then the palette is your palette object. And what so what what you do is you set up your palette object with a number of colors. And every time, every line of the display, the next color will be added to there. And so you can see on an ECS machine that takes one byte, and on AGA it takes four. And that is what you need to add to your value for uh, in a cop list. That's your customs. Now, I'm trying to remember now whether that's minus or plus, but. I think that's minus. I think that's negative. And custom chunky size and custom sprites is positive. So these ones are positive, I'm nearly sure. So custom sprites, you cannot use this. Yeah, you cannot use this with the, with the uh, display commands. This, so you can't use this with the display rainbow command. And You'll have to find out. I, I can't. I'm sorry. I can't remember whether it's positive or negative. But four n plus two is your the number of sprites. So if you're it, so this this basically resets the sprite registers halfway down the display or at the particular y position that you set, and then uh, it resets them. And then you need to give four n plus two, which is like if you're resetting all eight sprites, that's eight sprites plus two, so it's ten bytes. And you need to you need to add that to the value for the custom the custom bytes. Um, yeah, so there you go. So um, custom colors let you set it at a particular at a particular uh, position. Um, it lets you change the va change the value. So instead of display rainbow does all this automatically, custom colors does one specific change. And it lets you kind of, you know, yeah, change one one particular at one particular position on the screen. Um, so uh, custom chunky. Um, I'm not entirely sure what that does. I think it's something to do with it multiplies the it multiplies the the display. So it's like a kind of a horizontal squish, like 
if you're familiar with the Atari 8 bit to set your sprite width. Because if you you can you, you can set three different widths of sprites on the um, on the Atari 8 bit, but it's the same data. So if you set it like this sprite width two, it just um... <laughs> hey hey random bloke hey welcome in welcome in good to see you random bloke is uh, one of the Scottish Amiga user guys. Um, he, uh, he 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 he's very relaxing to watch actually. He plays some interesting games. Um, sometimes does retro stuff. Sometimes does um, just random, uh, you know, just uh, city skylines, that kind of that kind of thing, you know. And uh, yeah, well well worth a watch. Um, and, uh, let's see if this works. Uh, is it gonna work? Is it gonna work? Hey, there we go. Oh, city, you were playing city skylines. <laughs> there you go. I'm doing great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, and how, how are you? How was your stream? Welcome along. I welcome in Raiders. Um, I'm, I am on holiday mode. I finished work today for two weeks, so I am working my way through a bottle of wine, and so talking an awful lot of shite. <laughs> talking shite over Wednesday but um yeah so anyways yeah I'm, I'm trying to pick through the finer points of um you know some some um custom chip programming on the Amiga here so um I was doing some very basic stuff uh or sort of sort of not basic more more general stuff for Blitz Basic you know um I like to you know, try and try and get people programming on the Amiga, and you know, creating sort of retro games and uh, retro programs and stuff like that. There, you know, there have been some some game jams going on, and people are kind of getting, you know, getting back into programming the, the Amiga and stuff. But um, yeah. So this was about you know the, the Amiga's famous copper, and I'm just trying to remember. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to open some code of mine. Um, I'm going to open. Because of something where I've used the copper, I'm just gonna like look it up. But Ouija Knights, um, <laughs> if you haven't played it, it's still a work in progress. But this was our entry into the Amiga Game Jab, uh, or the Blitz Basic Game Jam last year, and it's a, a game about getting drunk in Glasgow. So um, uh, where am I? Amy Blitz Projects Ouija Knights, because I know I used the copper in that. And it's the most recent thing I can think of. Um, oh no! Fair enough. Yeah, absolutely. Um, fair enough. And but thanks, thanks for joining in. And you know, it's good, good, good to talk to you. And I sure I will, I will catch you again at some point. Um, I'll be away on holidays for the next two weeks. But after that, I'll be back to my dungeon here, and uh, I'll probably catch you on a stream. And thanks for, thanks for joining in. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Um, okay, so here's Ouija Knights. Um, here's the code. Now, I'm trying to remember how I did the copper list here. So, um, yes, Ami Blitz does have that kind of stuff. Um, Blitz Basic doesn't. It kind of does in that you can use the OS libraries. Like, you can use graphics.library. You can, so you can actually literally call graphics library calls and draw the graphics using that. And that will work, obviously, on RTG because it's completely system-friendly. Ami Blitz 3 does have some includes for doing other stuff and that works. Um you know and and that that has explicit support for AHI and for RTG. So I'll I'll look at them in a, in a little minute when I have a look at them. I just would need to find out where we do the um uh let me see what do I do? Oh, uh, let me see. Ouija in it, I presume. Oh. Ouija in it. Uh, do I? I don't. Now. I can't remember where this commanded. Let me see. One more, one more, one more. Ouija funks, maybe. Um, 
in a game display. That sounds likely. Okay. Oh yeah, so there's some things going on here. Don't worry about that. But um, split scroll. Are we using split scroll? Reaching nights, is it set? Split scroll? Split scroll is false, okay. So, so these are compiler directives here. So let that they basically include code if a certain condition is true. So if the split scroll constant, and if you're coming from C, constants are set using the hash symbol in front of the variable name. So so that's like a define in C. Um, so if you, if that's true, so if it's a non-zero value, then it, then it compiles this code, and if not, it compiles this code. So that's the compiler if, compiler else, compiler end. So it's false to so do this. So it's minus three. Uh, minus three. Okay, so um, yeah, just excuse. It is a bit of a mess code-wise. Um, so it's set to minus three, which is gives a wavy. So I'm using that to do an offset. Um, display. So um, I just have to find it where the there's, there's an effect basically when you get drunk in the game it starts making the screen go wavy and that's done with a copper. Mm. Yes, exactly. So a lot of these commands take more space for AGA because things like a palette, an AGA palette entry is uh, 24 bits, whereas an ECS palette entry is 12 bits. So it takes twice as much space to store an AGA palette. You know, it's, it's as simple as that. So you need to reserve more space. Now, you don't need to reserve the more space if you're using an ECS screen mode on AGA. It's only if you actually want to use the AGA features. That's the that's the difference. So if you're running on an AGA machine with an ECS game, you don't need to worry about the the difference there. It'll it'll work just it'll work just fine. Um, I'm just trying to remember where I make it how how it makes it drunk. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Thank you very much, and thanks thanks for all the questions and the. Yeah, the feedback, I, lo I, I love it. And it's, uh, yeah, there's been some, some, some good stuff. We're, we're, we're all learning here. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so thank you very much for calling in. Bye-bye. Good night. Um, now, let me figure this out. Let me figure this out. Eighty nights, so... I think in main loop. Okay, I'm using a custom string. Oh, for the split scroll. Absolutely. Oh, yes, yes. Increment wine. <laughs> oh, there we go. Tasty. Cheers. It's launcher. Okay, so this was this was the thing, right? So if if you're using a split scroll, that's a particular way. And what this does is, I'm using a, the copper list string to reset the um, the bitmap pointers partway through the. Hey, Vector Funk, welcome in. Hey, I didn't see you there. <laughs> oh yeah, and you've got the fodder there and everything. I love it. I love it. Um, how are you? Hope you're well. But um, yeah, so I was I was using a custom cop list here, so the custom string, and there, are, that's the same as the display, or, or very similar to display user, but it's kind of the opposite way around. So you know the way I'm saying you can't mix the custom commands and the display commands, so you do one or the other. And so a custom string is a copper set of copper commands that's that takes place at a particular point in the display. Whereas uh, display user 
adds on the commands to the cop list for the whole screen. And so basically that's it. So the display commands affect the whole screen. The custom commands uh, affect the um, a particular position on the screen. If that makes sense. Um, and I hope it does. But um, yeah, so, th so this, this cop string command, this is used to um, reset the bitmap pointers. So you can basically look at two different points of the same bitmap on the screen. And so once it reaches Y, a, a certain Y position, it resets the bitmap pointers to a different place. And that was a way of doing a scroll effect, uh, vertical scrolling kind of essentially for free. Because what will happen is you redraw the, the bitmap at the top and the bottom. And as you're going down, it will you don't see but halfway down there is the end of the first bitmap and the start of it again and it's wrapped around and so that's it now as it happens i've disabled it for most of the builds because it doesn't really it's you have to handle it with kid gloves it, it doesn't work all the time um yeah i'm fine uh vector funk i am on holiday mode and i keep on telling people that because i finished work now for today for a couple of weeks so i am I am I'm loving life. <laughs> it's excellent. Came home, I mowed the lawn and and now I'm drinking wine sitting in front of the computer. It's just, you know, living the dream. <laughs> so there you go. Um so let me see if I can find out where cop string is. Um Uh, I guess it's in here, is it? Nope. Oh, I can't remember where I've said it. Yeah, it's a little bit of work, but it was nice. It was a nice evening and I only have a small lawn. And also because I'm going on holidays, I didn't really want it looking like a fucking jungle when I come back in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've already been ignoring it for about two weeks and it was bad. So, yeah, you know, it's it's a lovely neighborhood here. They probably wouldn't appreciate it. <laughs> Reducing the property value in the place. Well, uh, but how, how are things with you? Oh, um, yeah, I don't know if this is the time and place for it, but how's how's the missus and uh, how is all that going? Um, I'm going to France. I'm going to France. My wife and son are already there. So I'm going to go and uh, pay them a visit. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, let me see. Where where are we? Where are we? I don't know where I set that string. But basically, anyway, I, I wanted to go back to this. I'm getting I'm getting very uh, sidetracked here. So the question was, and I'm going to look up in this scroll up here, was about where to put the the strings so it's a i'm doing a yes indeed congratulations congratulations vector funk uh vector funk i should say is, is one of the regulars at amiga ireland and and an all-around good bloke excuse me and um yes and him and his lovely missus have just had had themselves a little a little baby so uh fair play awesome work <laughs> Didn't know you had it in you. <laughs> but that's cool. And uh, yeah, no, congratulations guys and and all 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 the wishes to the missus. Um uh, yeah, no, it's cool. So uh, yeah, there you go. Um a little amigan running around the place now, not too long, I'm sure. But cool. Good stuff and um yeah. So Ah, yeah, so yeah, getting getting sidetracked here. So um, I I'm trying to find out where I actually put the line sideways. Um, so Ouija Knights at the, the main loop. Um, okay, there we go. Display scroll. Here we go. This is how you uh, use this. So. What I'm doing is I'm making the drunk effect in Ouija Knight with display scroll. So if you haven't seen it, all all it does is when you get drunk, it makes the screen go wavy like this. It's little, it's kind of like a, it's a, it's a common effect in demos and stuff like that. So um, 
that's it but that is a display command and i'm using negative offset for the um for uh init display so where's init display it's over here isn't it uh la 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 It was in here, wasn't it? it? Was in here. In a game display. So in a cop list, you can see here. I have minus three bytes here. So I uh, put a comment there. Minus three for line offsets. So let's have a look at back where we were. So if minus three bytes. So display scroll is. Let's see. Oh no, that's not what I wanted. Wrong button. Hey, no, that was the right button that time. I don't know why it's not working. One more go. There we go. Um, so you can see here, it's three bytes, regardless of what kind of screen mode or regardless of what kind of machine you're running. You basically need three bytes of copper space to do a display scroll. So presumably they are the weight command, the bitmap pointer, and the offset, presumably. Now, See this, a lot of these commands have an offset. Here's another thing. If you're combining commands, normally the offset will be zero because that's what, that's, um, that, that's the offset of whatever copper commands you're adding here. So if you're only adding one copper command, the offset will be zero. You don't need to include that. It's only if you're adding two or more, let's say display commands, you need to give an offset. So if you want, the scroll command to take priority first you give that an off that'll have the offset of zero which is the default and then you have a display rainbow command afterwards that has to be later you see so or th that has to be first but anyway whichever one's first has an offset of zero whichever one's second has to have an offset which is the number of bytes further down the list so if the display scroll is first and it's three bytes long that'll be zero one and two so that means that the next display something command that you use has to be at offset three. And I hope that makes sense, but that's that's how you use that the multiple commands on the same cop list. But you cannot combine display and custom commands. Just can't be done because these are all negative commands. The display ones are all negative and the custom are all positive. So this is why I've got in my code, I've, I've disabled some of the some of the commands and because you can have one or the other and that's it basically uh, now it is another reason to like uh ami blitz over blitz basic you can see the um you can see here that these commands have turned pink it's it depends on this the setup i uh i thought it was red but um anyways um they are commands that depend on the custom chipset you see and the, these joystick reading commands here so they are commands that are not entirely system friendly. You can you can use them, um, but you have to be aware that they might not be system friendly and they might depend on the actual physical hardware. So running them on, uh, let's say, um, uh, like Morph OS or OS4 or something like that, they probably won't work. Or depending on the... Um, depending on your setup, they might not work if you've got a graphics card screen or a sound card or, you know, things like that. And you just have to be careful with multitasking and stuff like that as well, you know. So you just have to beware. That's why they highlight them in red or, or pink as this particular setup is showing. Okay. But anyway, so so there there we see. So I'm using display scroll here to make the, to make the um, screen wavy. And how I'm doing that, like I said, that all the commands that are with display affect the entire display. All the commands that start with custom tend to just like look at a particular line on the cop list, which is, it corresponds to a particular line on the, on the screen. So if you want to change the palette halfway down the screen or change something else halfway down the screen, you use custom. If you want to affect the whole screen, you use display and that's how it works. And what I've done here is you give it the uh, what I'm doing here is I'm giving it the address of an array and that array is line offsets and all that's doing is telling it how far each line is offset as you go down the screen and so my drunk effect basically just runs through that array 
you know, it, the, the, the array is basically contains a very simple sine wave. And you just run down the array until you, and you just loop around. And that's all it is. It's very, very simple. But um, you, you give it the address of that array, and that's what it's looking for. And that's just a list of numbers in memory. So um, there you go. Um, but it's a cool little effect. And um, if you haven't played it, uh, you can <laughs> that was our entry into the um, the Bliss Basic Game Jam. Uh, it's about a night out in Glasgow where we all got drunk. And it, the idea is you try and stay out as long as possible. If you sober up, you have to go home. If you get too drunk, you have to go home. So um, there you go. Give give it a go. It's a work in progress, but you know what's there works, and you you'll get to see this effect in action. But yeah, so there there you go. So that I hope that explains the the copper list thing. Um, to was it you that asked that Amiga Bill's a legitimate son? <laughs> I think it might have been. Anyway, sorry, I, I took quite a while to uh, decipher all that stuff. Yes, excellent. Does it? Does that make sense to you? Does that answer your question? Hopefully, maybe. Excellent, cool. Even if you're just saying that to get me to stop talking about it and move on, I appreciate it. <laughs> um, okay, so. What we were going to look at um, now was, uh, let's just open a new file. Uh, yeah, we're going to look at the help. <laughs> good stuff. Um, good stuff. So, but yeah, so uh, yeah, I would say look at the Code Tapper website and look at, there are various websites that have kind of examples. The examples aren't really Blitz specific once you get to that point. If you're using the, the, dis the display user command, you're gonna set up a, like you're gonna add stuff that affects the whole display. And if you want to do offsets there, you have to program in those offset weights yourself. If that makes sense. So you have to look, you have to put in the weight command and then weight to line and then write to, write to address, weight to line, write to address. You have to do it that kind of way. So you have to kind of do it by hand, but yeah, that's, that's, that's how you do it. And you have to build up your string like that with just with a sequence of bytes and then you feed that in the command will tell you that it's uh let's see display user it doesn't tell you how many things um you see custom not custom cop They don't tell you. But I think both of them, you add the number of bytes on that you have in the string. Uh, I don't know if you include the end byte or not, but um, yeah, that's what I, I, I'm nearly sure that's what you do. So you have to do that. But if you run your code with the, with the debugger on, it will tell you that you don't have enough copper space and then you know you need to increase it. So you can kind of, you can kind of do a trial and error thing there and do it that way if you want. You know, that'll 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 work but anyways okay so so we were looking at the documentation here um so that's the display library um and they, they, yeah so but yeah I, I haven't started on the third party stuff so we're going to go back and third party libraries are under def libs and and def libs i don't really know why they're called def libs but there's a file but i kind of do know but it's not it doesn't really make sense to the casual user there's a file called deflibs and that contains all the actual library code all combined into a big file and that's what blitz loads up when it starts up and that's where it gets all the commands from the default libs and usually how it works is you add custom libraries to the deflibs file and deflibs gets bigger and then 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 blitz has it it blitz contain it blitz can load in those things so that's that's usually how it works um so but the def the def libs link here doesn't quite make sense but these are the other these are the third party libraries and if you if you have the ultimate blitz basic cd or if you have Ami, Ami Blitz 3 these are the libraries that you get and these are all the third party libraries these are not in the manual 
but they're basically they're basically standard you know they're they're in, most of them were included on the extras disc when you bought the original blitz basic 2.1 and they've been included ever since because they were in they were most of them came from uh most of them came from what <laughs> from the bum magazine <laughs> the, the blitz user magazine which is called bum so bum issue five and bum issue six it was kind of like a disc bag and it came with like example programs and contributions and people sent in extra command libraries and these some of the popular ones became very popular and just became standard and this is how we got all these so there's a lot of them here um a lot of them i haven't used and i i used this uh in one of the streams previously and it works quite well so it's basically uh how to read and write or how to read tool types so if you don't know tool types you you know it's a very it's an amiga specific thing but if you go into the icon information and you actually look at the icon there are tool types and you can have settings in there like um yeah let's say uh yeah you can, and you can store a setting like that and that's saved in the icon and that lets you then use that setting it's used for settings that you wouldn't normally you wouldn't frequently change like you'd know you'd set once and then you leave it as it is forever so there are some there are some kind of standard ones like um um like they're it's basically for workbench it's kind of the same thing as setting um like arguments on the command line but um yeah for there there are some standard ones that are used especially if you if you start the program automatically from from wb startup like uh yeah like do not wait you have to add that and that stops workbench from pausing when it loads your program and waiting for it to quit like so if you want your program to run in the background and start when the system starts you have to add that tool type so you know so yeah basically it's a, it's kind of a standard way of setting infrequently used settings so you would set that once and you'd leave it there forever because there's no real need to change it so that's what that's what tool types are Aaron's icon lib lets you read and write them from uh, from Blitz, and it's actually quite good. It it works quite well. It um, you need to um, get icon info. You need to do that first, and that reads the icon in, and then you uh, you can you can you can do what you want with the tool types, and then you should free icon info, or you'll uh, or what'll happen is you'll start leaking memory, and it'll probably hold a lock on the file which means that you can't modify that icon afterwards so but yeah so it's good the, the the third party deck documentation tends to be a little bit better than the blitz documentation although it's not without its problems i have not used the cd32 or the chunky lib and the documentation isn't there for them so i honestly couldn't tell you anything about them um but if you're not familiar with the concept chunky when we're talking about chunky we're talking about um bitmaps basically and a chunky bitmap uses one byte to store one pixel and you kind of think yeah that makes a lot of sense but the Amiga by default doesn't use that kind of bitmap it uses a planar bitmap and where one one pixel is made up of x number of different bit planes and it can be any number up to eight and so if it's one bitmap if it's one bit plane then it's two colors deep so you can have either the background or the foreground color if it's too deep you can have four colors and like your default workbench 3.1 screen is four colors so that's a two bit plane screen so you can you know how fast a screen like that can be because you know if you've ever used workbench on a four color screen um so you know there, there's quite a good there's quite a trade-off with the Amiga chipset and it's quite, you know, there's a balance and, you know, most games and stuff like that will deal with that kind of balance where you trade off colors for speed and memory because, as well, because the more bit planes, the more memory you need. So the problem is that using some, some games, especially 3D games, like 2D games love a, a planar bitmap. They, because they're scrolling across and it's very easy to deal with that in the Amiga custom chips. 3D games don't care about that. They care about what's in each individual pixel. And the problem there is 
it's it's very slow in the Amiga because of how the chipset works. So they 3D stuff generally tends to use chunky bitmaps, and so these chunky libraries convert chunky to planar, planar to chunky, or chunky to planar, and it's that's a way of you know, you know getting 3D graphics onto a, a planar screen. So I haven't used this, um, but this is basically. Um, this looks like it does one solid pass at a at a, a thing, but a new type is if you're if you've used C, a new type is a struct. It's the same thing, and um, yeah. So basically, you pass this a bitmap and it swaps it over from chunky to planar, and that's what you need for doing um, things like a like a three D game. I haven't used it. I haven't used either of these libraries. Um, color to gray. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. This seems quite cool. It, it basically will, you know, it, it'd be useful for fading palettes and stuff like that, or for converting palettes. Um, it gives you some um, commands for changing colors. <laughs> hey. Hey, Scottish Serenity. How are you? Hey, good evening to you. And thank you very much for the raid. Welcome in raiders. Um, I am, I'm in holiday mode because I finished work today for two weeks and everyone else in the chat is sick of hearing about it. <laughs> so I'm 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 having a, a a bottle of wine, and yes, I am enjoying myself to the max. So um oh hey okay, good night, Mega Bill's illegitimate son, and thank you very much for the questions. Thanks for all the, the thanks for the chats, and um, yeah, thank you very much for the, for the holiday wishes. <laughs> And uh, here I'll talk to you again soon. But um, yeah, so I'm going to go through a few of these, few more of these libraries, and that'll probably be it. I'll have to do another one on the uh, Ami Blitz stuff that I was talking about, I think. But um, but welcome in Scottish. Uh, I hope you had a good stream. What were you doing? Were you uh, um, doing retro stuff? Were you doing modern stuff? Because Scottish does uh, does both. Oh, nice, nice. Are you are you going somewhere special? Or are you doing anything for it? I'll give it a little shout out there. Aha! Oh, oh Half-Life Alex, I see. <laughs> how how is that without VR? Because it's kind of it was kind of built for VR, wasn't it? Like, does it work well with the conventional setup? Uh, yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Is it kind of the equivalent of playing playing a a, a keyboard mouse game with a controller is that that kind of situation but um yeah welcome in jedi killer as well thank you very much for coming along um oh i see oh, i see yeah 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 so um and welcome in predator gaming welcome along um i am great uh thank you <laughs> I see, I see, I see. Um, you know, I haven't played it on. I I haven't played it either way. I haven't played it with VR. I haven't played it with VR. But uh, what I what little I've seen of it looks very interesting. It looks very good. But um, what we're doing here is we're doing a little bit of uh, Blitz Basic programming. Um, I'm going through some, uh, if you'll excuse the pun, some basics of it, and I'm I'm just looking at sort of. Uh, basically the 3d or the, the third party libraries that blitz basically comes with nowadays and just kind of like giving a little bit of an overview on them we did some a little bit of coding earlier and i've just kind of uh, been been going through some random stuff to do with blitz basic that i've missed on previous tutorial streams but I've been, i have been running tutorial streams for a while it's not a particularly regular thing but um you know whenever i kind of have a quiet evening i'll, I'll do a tutorial um, for this kind of stuff, it's mostly aimed at uh, there's a there's an Amiga Tool Jam, which is quite cool, and that is um, you know it's basically like a game jam. You know, it's a competition for writing for for writing uh, a user uh, like not a a, a non game program for the Amiga. So you know for for writing a useful program, a tool, if you like, and um, yeah. So that's so basically this is what this is. 
these streams have kind of been aimed at is kind of getting to code a system friendly program in Blitz 2 or in Amiblitz 3. Uh, so, you know, so I've been going through some of the stuff that's involved in that and we've been opening windows and, you know, opening files and dealing with menus and all that kind of stuff, you know. So, um, yeah, so that, that's basically what we've been doing on or what, what have we been doing here. Probably a little bit different to uh, <laughs> to 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 uh, Half-Life, but um, but there you go. Um, anyways, so now there are a couple of tracker libs here I'm just looking at. So, um and neither of the documentation they're working here. Now, Elm, so I'm going to skip them because what I was going to say was there are better tracker libraries that have been released since then. So we won't worry about them for now. Elmore, whoever Elmore is, he wrote some pretty cool libraries. These are very, very cool and it's well worth browsing the documentation for these. So the DOS library gives you, oh, okay. The DOS library gives you all these cool functions so you can you can um, basically examine some the, the properties of files, and Blitz doesn't give you these functions. Um, so without this library, you'd have to go accessing DOS library by hand, which is which is how you do it in C. And if you're going to do that, you might as well do the whole thing in C, I'd say. But um, this lets you do some some pretty cool stuff. Um, so you, you basically you lock a file, and then you can read information about it, like the like you know. Uh, entry bits entry size so how it works is you choose for for this kind of stuff like all these entry commands you you choose a directory and then you examine the directory and then you go through it entry by entry and it by entry and you repeat you go basically go through a loop until you hit until well okay it's not going to work for me but no more entries is true so that's that's what you do there and that that's how you can um you know, there, well, there's probably an example there. So, um, while more entries, okay, so it's the opposite of no more entries. Um, so you can just print the the name, and you can print whether it's a directory if it's entry there. So you know, the example there is actually quite good. It gives you all the information that you need to be able to create your own directory command, let's say a dir command. So um, yeah, so there's some some pretty useful stuff there. Like uh, like make file, make dir, move file, copy, uh, run, assign. You know, these are all commands you'll, you'll know if you're familiar, familiar with Amiga DOS and lets you do that kind of stuff. Uh, DOS errors is good. If like if you if you run a DOS command and it gives you an error code, it'll be like a number like error 107 or something like that. But that again, it's not I don't know why the documentation isn't working. But dot error string will give you like a, a text version of that error code. So it'll say uh, like error 104. If you get an error 104 returned from your copy command, it'll say file doesn't exist or something, you know, something like that. I'm just making these things up as I go along. But that's what it does. Um, so examine will let you look at a particular thing. So an examine is a sort of very specific kind of thing you examine a file, you examine a directory, and that is that kind of creates a lock on that directory or that file, and then lets you deal with whatever you need to deal with, with that file. So it, it, it's like, an, it's a very specific action that you do to a file. And that lets you do a lot of the other stuff, like get the information on it. Um, analyze disk. Oh, that worked amazingly. Um, so this, this, uh, and if you can see, you can see here, it, 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 it's basically for getting information on the, on a drive, but it can also work as a function. So you can you can get an if, and it will return false if it uh, if it fails. Um, so basically, this is what you need to do before you get the other disk, like disk unit, disk capacity, disk used. So this can give you like information on the 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 disk that you've chosen, or the or the the volume as as you would call it. Um, yeah, so there's lots of different things. N environmental variables are cool. Um, there's get env and set env. They are, you know, they're, they're environmental variables. They're stored on Amiga OS and they're kind of ways of setting parameters and, you know, just, you know, setting variables that might want to be used by other programs. Um, uh, file parts and path parts, they're, they're cool functions because what they'll do is, Again, they're not working. I yeah. Um, 
if you have a path, let's say uh, RAM disk and sys pointer.prefs, which is a legitimate path that's some like on the go settings for your pointer, file parts will, re will, will return just pointer.prefs and path parts will return just the, uh, you know, RAM and sys part. So that's quite cool for, you know, for separating things. If you want to know what, what, you know, what else is in a particular directory, you can use that. Um, the other stuff like file command set bits and things like that, they, they kind of self-explanatory, um, you know, for, for getting the, the file comment and for setting it. I don't know if there, you can actually set it. I presume you can. Uh, I don't see it there. But um, yeah, so there you go. Uh, but anyway, that's the Elmore DOS library. Pretty much everything you could want to do with it, with files or with the DOS library is there. Um, system library, graphics based. Oh, Nivrig was asking about that the other day. Um, now that I remember it. So um, this is like, you know, this gives you a lot of information about the system itself. Um, um, so you get things like, um, yeah, the intuition base, graphics base, disk font base, commodities base. These are all things that you need if you're going to do C style accesses to these libraries. It's quite a, you know, so uh, it basically returns an address and that, that, that address will be a pointer to a struct and that struct will have a lot of information on that library. And for niche things, it's quite important to have that. If you need it, you'll know you need it. And if you don't, if you don't think you need it, then you definitely don't need it, if that makes sense. But um, you really, excuse me, you really need that if you're going to be doing, um, you know, direct OS accesses to graphics, excuse me, graphics stuff and things like that. So, so it's a, it's an easy way to get that stuff. Um. Uh, null, oh, well, retrace. Null is quite an interesting one because um, um, basically it will, um, null returns basic, basically null. It's a different, um, if you're using Blitz 2, null returns a null terminated string. And this is one of the things that you have to be careful with if you're using AMI Blitz 3 and Blitz 2. So, 99.9% .9 of the commands do exactly the same thing. Null is different. And null is used basically to terminate tag lists and things like that. So and a tag list is an OS access thing where you, you put a load of parameters together in a list and you have to terminate it with a null, a null function, a null string or a null character. And that null function does that. So because those kind of accesses were only really added later on and you know, because they were a little bit awkward to do in Blitz 2. In Blitz 3, the null command was used, but it clashed with this third party library. So this library has been modified to change it. So instead of null, as you have in Blitz 2, you have the get global string address here. And this is what null is in Blitz 2. So it's a little bit annoying, but if you have code written in Blitz 2 that uses the null function, you need to change every instance of that to get global string address, which does the same thing. It just gives you a null terminated string because some um, some stuff needs uh, yeah it, there's a description there for it some stuff needs a null terminated string that is not uh, how Blitz handles it because Blitz has its own internal strings string a way of dealing with strings and it deal it deals with strings like primitives so you can add them you can you know manipulate them you don't have to define their length or anything like that but there are limits to that and when you deal with the os sometimes the os needs a buffer of uh you know needs needs a defined buffer and then you need to use the get global string address and so that's that's what that's there for um all the other stuff is pretty self-explanatory request is cool that opens a requester on the screen and it's very simple we were using that earlier so request you can get basically if you give it this bar symbol the only thing that really needs to explain here is the bar symbol here if you want to have more than one gadget you separate your gadgets by that 
if you want to have more than one line of text, you separate the lines with that. So that's the, you might call it the pipe symbol if you're, you know, in if you're into the uh, into the Linux shell. Um, yeah, so that's 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 quite a cool command and it's very useful to have um, screen width and screen height and stuff like that. They you know, do what they say in the tin. Um, FFP basis fast loading point um, is yeah basically the math libraries chip free fast free and largest free they're the memory you know you get what's available um, so the number of bytes that are available in chip fast or largest that's kind of self explanatory as well um, show requesters you know what I, I actually oh yeah so there's a function in Amiga DOS where you can uh, basically um, make sure that um, all requesters are cancelled and it's, it's rarely used it's used you would use it if you logged into your Amiga remotely using a secure shell or something like that you know or telnet because if you try to access a path that didn't exist you get a requester and obviously you can't see that on the sh on your terminal so y you can disable that it's Kind of frowned upon if you're kind of in a multitasking environment because you know other programs might want to open a requester and then they're denied. But basically, what this does is it it treats every requester that opens as if you've clicked cancel immediately. So that's it. Um, um, now wait for is basically the same thing. If you've if you've been following the other tutorials, it's the same thing as the uh, wait event, pretty much. Um, but you just you specify your own codes for it like it's 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 the same thing I'm not going to go over that again um, yeah so that's uh, syslib matslib now this is basically kind of sort of general maths functions that are in a lot of other languages or you know a lot of people have macros for these things one of the key things that isn't actually in the blitz core libraries which is strange is exclusive or and that's used for some of the um actually some some graphics display library accesses and some of the if you're accessing you know the um display registers and some of the aga stuff especially the parameters have to be exclusive ord and that's a good function to have and you know it's not in the core libraries but it's there and, and it's it's quite cool you'll notice that there are lots of different versions of each of these largest, largest, like like the three largest to three smallest commands, and they have .l, .q, .w. The reason for that is the three different types of variables, and I've, I've uh, previous streams I've explained the variables, but the short version is this is a long a long variable that's thirty two bits wide, so that's a that's an integer up to two gigabytes or down to minus or up to two billion and down to minus two billion. Um, quick is a, f a fake floating point value so that's got a fraction to it and that's 32 bits as well and that is uh, 65,000 or sorry 32,000 plus or minus and uh, uh, and a fractional part so a 16 bit fraction um, so those two are basically the same size in bits but one of them can hold whole numbers only and one of them can hold decimals but a smaller whole number so you kind of need to know which one you want to use, but both of them are probably going to be this are, are are going to be the same speed because they're both 32 bits wide. A word, 16 bits wide, and that will be twice as fast to execute on a 68000. It won't make a difference on a 32 bit Amiga, but on a 16 bit Amiga, that will be twice as quick as the other ones. And so that's why it's there, and, and that's why it's quite important. Now that will only give you an integer, plus or minus. 32,000 so if you need a bigger numbers than that uh, you still need or if you need fractional parts you still need to go for these and then you'll just take a, a, a speed penalty because you'll have to do two accesses for each read so yeah so I'm saying twice as fast it might even be faster than twice as fast because each number has to be loaded in and you've got long and long so if you're doing it if you're doing it Okay, it's the wrong one, but um Oh hey hot dog, how are you? Welcome along. Oh oh well how how was your evening anyway? 
Um, oh, oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. And cheers to you. Um, I, I, I appreciate the, the, the subscription. That's cool. Three months. Excellent. <laughs> I've, yeah, I, I think people are crazy for subscribing to me rambling on, but thank you very much. Um, I am in holiday mode. Um, so I am, uh, I'm working my way through a bottle of wine. I'm nearly finished it actually. So excuse the increasingly drunk ramblings as I go on, but I'm in holiday mode. I'm finished work today for two weeks, so I am happy with life, <laughs> but welcome along. Welcome in. Um, What I'm doing at the moment is I'm going through some of the um, some of the third-party command libraries that do come with Blitz Basic, but um, they're uh, um, just you know just just going going through that and um, so I come to the northeast. <laughs> Tempting as it is, my wife and son are already in France, so I should probably go and join them. <laughs> But um, yeah, some other time, some other time. <laughs> um, it's it's a while since I've been up that direction. Uh, a few years ago, my wife was working in Aberdeen uh, with just for like a weekend. And I went up to Aberdeen for the weekend. And if I'd known you then, I might have called in. But uh, I didn't. So uh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, not a very interesting story. But uh, there you go. Uh, at some point, I'll be up that way as well, I'm sure. Or again, I'm sure, and I'll say hello. But yeah, so, so um, yeah. The, despite the, what the documentation here is saying, oh, there, oh, it does have the three different sections. They're all on the one page. But basically, if you use the Word version, the the sixteen bit version, it will be dramatically quicker on, uh, on an Amiga five hundred, let's say, with a sixty eight thousand, than on a six eight zero twenty. And the reason for that being because it all it only deals with sixteen bit numbers. So the result, so you've got two reads from memory. You've got the first parameter, the second parameter, and you've got the result. So that's three, basically three um, memory operations. So each of them will be half the time if you do 16-bit on, on a 68,000. So, or well, when I say that, sorry. No, each of them will be um, half the time of these ones on a 68,000. So the long and the quick versions. So they'd be, they'd be, it'll, be double, it'll be double the speed for each of those operations. So it's basically six times quicker to do this on a 68,000 than to do that. But on a 68,020 and above, it won't make a difference. So if you're writing software that you think might run on a, on a 500, definitely worth doing this because sometimes your program will needs, needs all the speed it can get. But there you go. Um, the same will apply for the smallest functions there, and um, average also has uh, three different types as well. The random function, there is a random function in the Blitz core libraries, but it doesn't have a randomized like a randomized command. And randomize is basically there so you can give it a seed. So if you're familiar with how random numbers work on computers, they is basically they're not really random they're just hard to predict <laughs> and and that's the story but if you for example if you want to create a random level and you know you you basically generate a whole string of random numbers and like the first number is you know you did the x coordinate of the first door and the second number is the y coordinate of the first door things like that you know you you can do that but if you want to create that same level again you just use the same seed because once you set the seed, that will determine the sequence and that sets the sequence in motion, if you like. And it will be a very, very long pattern, but it will be a pattern nonetheless. And so Worms use this, uses this to great effect. So if you ever, you know, if you're playing Worms and you find a level that you really like, and this is gonna sound completely fucking nerdy now, but in the original version of Worms, there's a level called, there's a level and it's number 1466. <laughs> If you, whenever worms are generating a level, you can pause it and you can type in your own number and it will generate a level based on that number. And that's seeding the random number generator. And if you type in 1466, you get a big, long, icy bridge and it's fucking chaos very, very quickly. 
and it's it's a great level to play <laughs> if you're playing it. Anyway, there you go. That's seeding random numbers. So you can generate the same level again and again. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. And I will, uh, I will, I will wear that badge with pride. <laughs> oh, did you? There you go. There's, a, there's a, there's a claim to fame. There you go. <laughs> um. No, that's cool. Um. Yeah, I, I, I made a few levels myself back in the day. I never like put them on Aminet or anything like that. But um, that's cool. But I, I, I had. I had a list of a few levels that were exceptionally good when and when you find them you write down the number because when you pause it it gives you the number so that you can go back to it you know but 1466 is the one that always sticks in my mind that was always like it always makes you hate people because it's just it's a it's a very very quick level because so many people end up on the bridge and and it's just it's just chaos because there's mines on the bridge a couple of couple of grenades in there and everyone's just gone like it's it's great Anyways, um, so that's it. So you can use this to to set the seed for the random um, for for the random function in in this library. Um, so basically, these hex functions do the same thing, or basically do what you imagine they do. Um, you can give it a hex, like a string, which is like uh, you know dollar symbol. BFE001, which is like one of the one of the CIA addresses, um, and it will convert that into the decimal, into the decimal version. So you know, it's it's it's, it's if you entered things as a string, or if it reads from a file, let's say, and the file stores thing and has things as hex strings, which would be odd now that I think about it. But anyways, yeah. So it it, it allows you to convert that, and bin does the same thing. Because there are, the, you can do the opposite with the bins function, bin string function, and the hex string function, and they will give you a string that represents the uh, numerical value that you give it. So you know, so it's basically the opposite, of the, the opposite of those functions. Uh, the hardware lib. Basically, there's not a whole lot in here that needs explanation. I would say, uh, force pal, force ntsc gives you know does what it says on the tin it makes the machine go into those modes if you have a suitable agnes chip so the early 500s won't be able to do that but the later amiga 500s and all the other models since you can choose pal or ntsc by software and that will let you do that so frequency um hmm, that's interesting oh no sorry yeah yeah i was thinking it was someone else basically that lets you change the frequency for a particular channel now for audio so this this changes the pitch of the of whatever's playing in that channel but you should bear in mind that uh, yeah so so it, it basically changes there's a register in Paula that changes how many kind of clock cycles are between each each byte of the sample if that makes sense so the lower the period the higher the pitch that your th your sample plays at, so when you load in an audio sample, it will have a it will have a given pitch, and it's usually kind of a, a sort of a mid range, a, a mid like in, it'll be like a, a C or something like that. You know, it'll be kind of based on a kind of standard note. But you can adjust it, and you can use this command to to you know change the pitch of a of a sample that's playing. Um, but yes, yeah, in the hardware library because it's literally dealing with the hardware. Um, v weight position. So if you use a V weight command, that waits till the frame, till the till the next vertical blank, and so that's how you can synchronize graphics with the display, so you don't get tearing or gl graphical glitches and things like that. V weight position does the same thing, but it waits for a certain position on the display. And this might be important if you've done something like used like the commands I was talking about earlier for resetting the sprite pointers, which means that you can use, you know, the Amiga has eight hardware sprites. You can use eight along the certain, you know, you know, on certain band of the screen. And then you can synchronize uh, uh, to this particular point and uh, display the others down here. So it's, um, well, it says there for interesting graphical effects interesting might be a torn display or it might be uh it might be you know um 
you know, just spl splitting two different bitmaps, you know, and so there there are a few different things there, but it, it kind of, it's the kind of thing, if you were looking for that command, you'd know you're looking for it, you know what I mean? It's not the kind of thing, it's like, oh, I wonder what that does. So, peak two string, I don't see the point in it because it does the same thing as peak strings. Um, yeah, so this gives you basically, um, um, yeah, it's like a timer kind of thing. It's, it gives you a value that like is based on how long the Amiga has been switched on. So it's that it, that just reads the value from one of the CIA timers, and it's you can use it as an uptime thing uh, or as a, as a timing thing. But it, you just bear in mind that on NTSC machines it'll be sixty times a second, and on PAL it'll be fifty times a second. Um, um, depth just gives you the depth of the current bit of logic. It's not not a big deal. Um, click mouse right M mouse weight is an interesting one because mouse weight will pause your program until you click the mouse um but um what what it will do is yeah basically it will um yeah if, if you're holding down the mouse button it will continue straight away so it doesn't actually do anything if you're holding down the mouse button whereas click mouse waits for you to actually you know click the mouse button so that's that's it. But it's it's kind of for debugging. I wouldn't use that with multitasking because it busy loops. So it just constantly runs the CPU waiting, reading the mouse. Um, very bad for the multitasking, especially on a slow machine. You'll find it grinds to a halt if you do that. And the last one, Elmore Function Library. Um, index, that's not something I've ever used. So a list array, I've talked about arrays before. A list array is a special kind of array. It's only one dimension, but it is, uh, it's, it's kind of a, it, instead of a random access array, it's a sequential list. And so each, each item in the array is linked to the next. So you can, if you have an array of, let's say 12 items, you can delete item seven and then the array will go one, two, three, four, five, six, eight. But you don't access you don't access it by numbers, so I don't really see the point in this um, command because it's you know it's liable to have the rope pulled from under it. But um, yeah, so um, so that but that's basically the idea of, of a list array is is a particular type of array where everything's just a linked list, so one after the next after the next. So if you delete something from the middle of the array, the two halves that are left with the gap get stuck together. So it's as if the gap just didn't exist. And the same, likewise, you can insert other items into the array and then the list is kind of like, you know, continues on. So it's good for, um, if you don't know exactly how many things you're gonna be dealing with, you know, so, you know, um, oh, I'm trying to think. Um, if you're reading a file, you don't know how many lines are going to be in the file. You can just create a list and each time you just add a new item to the list and each each new list item is a, contains a line of the file. So you can you can do that good with a string list. But yeah, that's that's basically what we're, you know, the, the kind of idea we're talking about. But I don't really get you would never really want to know your index on a on a linked list because it doesn't really make sense. But anyways, um, cipher string and okay, it just basically creates a simple encryption of a of a string. Um, I don't think it's a big deal, and it, because it's reversible, it's it's obviously not high security stuff, so I wouldn't trust it with any high security stuff but there you go search i think is the same as in string from um yeah so search end go, goes from one end of the string search begin comes from the other end and it's the same with in string it'll return basically the position of a substring within a string so it's for looking for a, a few characters within a within a string car count okay that's 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 quite cool these are these are definitely miscellaneous functions um but yeah so car count is the number of times a character occurs in a string and repeats is basically um okay so that's just the, the number of bytes that are repeated at the beginning of the string so you, you can read these things yourselves i suppose 
I was reading through it, but um, checksum. Um, okay, I'm presuming that's using the same kind of checksum that like the Amiga DOS uses, and that gives you kind of a well, a checksum. It, it, it's it's kind of a a value that will tell you, you know, that basically relates to the contents of a file or a string or a. a you know, and in, in this case, it's a string. And so you can know if two strings are identical because the checksums will be identical. So, um, you know, that's, that's, that's basically the point of it. So you can see if a string has been modified or not. Um, but yeah, so there's lots of cool stuff in the Elmore Libs. Um, Fuzzy's Rec Lib. I haven't used this one, so I'm going to skip it. But, um, Excellent. hey, cheers. <laughs> Um, so I haven't used this library, so I'm going to skip it and I'm not going to go into it. Oh dear. <laughs> um, Lothan's libraries, these are like, like the Elmore libraries. These are excellent. These add a lot of cool stuff. So we were dealing with these earlier. So read args gives you the, uh, you know, if you, if you've ever dealt with Amiga DOS, you know how the parameters work. You've got, uh, you know, You've got a template, so you do a question mark with your you, when you run a command. Where's the command I was working with? Arg test two is what we're doing. So we can do a question mark, and it will give you a a template. So you can see that you have to enter a file new, and that's a switch, and count is a number. So these you know what arguments it's looking for, and you can you know you can use them. Um, you can even mix them up. So file, let's say it's and the count we're going to call it 14 and then new so you don't even have to do them in the right order and it can automatically decipher them and it's really cool it's a really nice fu function of the amiga uh, os so that lets you use them so you do a read args that you set your template read args and then there's an array and despite what the documentation here says it's crg 0124345 and that's how you read your values from the parameters. So once you, once you see it there, it all makes sense. And so even though the order of the numbers is quite strict to the template, Amiga DOS will have rearrange whatever the user gives you into the right order. It's, it's really cool. It's really, really nice way of doing things. Um, so that's fine. To do that, it should be, I should give you the warning, you need to do workbench message first. And that will tell you whether it's run from Workbench or from the shell. Um, but it's good to do good. You know, it, it's used instead of WB startup, which is a standard blitz command. Um, so WB arg. Now, if you're not familiar with it, you, and you might not be, it's also possible. So, you know, in, in, in the shell, you can give arguments, which are basically text that you add after the command like that. But in Workbench, you can also add arguments to a file. And I made a, I made an example here. So, you know, you, you open a program by double clicking it and you get an argument, which is the name. The first argument that Workbench gives is the name of the program itself. So you can see arg test two. OK, fine. But you can give arguments to a program by you select the program and you select any other files that you want to give as an argument. Files or directories. So if I want to give, let's say, uh, arg test here and amiblitz 3 and the ram disk three different arguments so uh, i uh, so what i do is i click that then i hold down shift and i click the other files multi select and you double click on the last one and you can see it's got four arguments now the first argument is itself oh oh try to highlight that arg test 2 the second argument is the next file that it was selected arg test then the full path to amiblitz 3 and then RAM disk. So it, it, it gives you all the arguments that you wanted and uh, it's really cool. So, you know, so this is a, a, again, another a really nice function of Workbench um, and of the OS that it gives you that kind of access. So, um, yeah, so, so it's cool that you can do that. So WB args gives you the number of them and then WARG gives you the you know, so you can you can check in an array. It it kind of acts like an array, and it tells you which argument is which.
but yeah, so it is, it is very cool for, um, you know, giving, giving arguments to a program. Um, Raylib, oh, it's not something I've used. This is not something I've used at all, so I'm going to skip that. Um, compare. Um, again, not something I've used, but I don't think there's anything there that can't really be done using other libraries and stuff. Like I said earlier, if, if you can get away with using fewer libraries, that's a good thing because Blitz Basic will make your executable bigger by the size of whatever library you use. So even if you only use the big command here, um, bigger of two integers, even if you only use that command, it will add the code for all these commands into your executable as well. So if you can do that another way, um, you know, that's highly recommended. Now, obviously, if you're going to use a few commands from here, then that's fine. But, you know, it's just something to be borne in mind. Oh, uh, yes. Good night, Scottish. Thank you very much for the raid. Thank you very much for calling in. And um, I will chat with you soon, I'm sure. And, uh, yeah, listen. Take care of yourself. Thank you very much. Um, these, the rest... Rest some guys, you know, I'm looking at the time here. I'm probably going to have to give it... Oh, that's some excellent documentation right there. Um, I have no idea what that does. Um, but I'm, I'm going to go through the Loten Libs and then I'm going to continue this some other time because we're going to get into some other pretty hefty ones and probably need a bit more explanation to them. Um, now, these are drawing commands. Um, so, now, these will let you draw a load of different things but in a system friendly manner now the thing with drawing like this is you need to it will tell you you must use draw port to set the RAS port structure to use so these drawing commands work directly on memory so so if you draw a line it will set the pixels for that line all the way through the memory you need to make sure that that is a bitmap and not your program or not the OS or not some other program, you know. So you do that by um, uh, by setting the, the RAST port. Now, RAST port is an Amiga, you know, it's, it's an Amiga thing. And it's basically a bitmap. It's, it's, it's um, basically somewhere where you can, it's a, a rasterized section of display. So it'll be a bitmap, but it's not necessarily bitmap in kind of like, you know, the sense that it's a set bitmap in memory that, you know, but because it can be related to other objects. So if you open a window on the screen, it will have a RASP port. So you can draw to the window. So if you query the window structure, you can get the window structure, you can get the address of the RASP port, and then you give it to this, and that tells it that you want to draw to the current window. And that's quite cool because Blitz has a couple of window drawing commands, but they're pretty, pretty primitive and pretty poor, to be honest. And um, but you can see, you know, so there's, there's bevel draw bevel box, um, uh, blit box box fill circle ellipse. You know, there's a lot of commands here that are very cool and that don't really have an equivalent in the Blitz libraries. So. They let you do a lot of system friendly drawing to a window on workbench and that's that's what it is but you need they'll they'll draw to any rasp port you give it so you can you can have a rasp port on a screen a rasp port on a window you can set up a rasp port in memory that points to you can allocate memory and point to something that doesn't have a rasp port but usually a rasp uh, yes yeah, so I, I suppose the difference is a rasp port is a bitmap that's intended to be displayed because a bitmap might not necessarily ever be displayed on mass you know what i mean it might be that um you know it's bigger than the screen or that you only use a certain portion of it to you, you know you cut shapes out of it or cut sprites out of it or something like that you know whereas a rasp port will be directly displayed on screen that's the intention so um yeah so so it could be a screen you know an actual intuition screen it could be a window but but basically if you have the address of a RASP port, you can use these commands, and base and yeah. So querying the um, or having a look at the structure, the struct of a of a screen or a window will give you a RASP port address, and then you can just draw to it. So there you go. 
So text is um yeah, does what it says on the on, on, on the tin. Um so you use a set font function uh to set the to set the font you're gonna use or else it'll just use a default. Um text len is quite cool because what that will do is once you've set a RAS port, it will give you the length of the text in pixels. So which is, you know, you kind of think maybe there's, you know, there's not much use to that because you can just multiply the length by eight, but that's only if it's using default font of Topaz, which is an eight by eight font. So it's like, you know, a very, very primitive way of doing things. So, um, yeah, so basically you can get, you can give this a string, uh, draw, uh, uh, you know, and that will get, and that will return the number of pixels that that will take in the current font. And that's very useful because if you, especially if you want to center something or if you want your gadget to be the right size for it, that's quite cool. And that'll just, you know, you can, there's an optional parameter there for just choosing how many characters you want to use. Um, um, so yeah, basically uh, draw topaz. That will make sure that it uses only a ROM based font. So. The reason it's like the Amiga OS comes with three sizes of Topaz, eight, nine, and eleven, and Topaz is the default font, but only eight and nine are in the Kickstart ROM. So, um, sorry, I, I, uh, minor panic there because I got a reminder saying that I'm supposed to be in a hotel now, in ten minutes, but now it's just it's for the whole day. It's just tomorrow night. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah. So basically, this lets you just make sure that it only uses a ROM-based font. And uh, there you go. Uh, oh, I don't know what this is. Oh, style. Okay, yeah. So this this is a soft style. So it gives you basically one, two, four, eight, or uh, sixty-four uses a color version of the font. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But I'm I'm sitting here, and my wife's wondering, like, where the fuck is he? <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah so that's that's that but it's tomorrow night tomorrow night it's just uh you know when your calendar reads things from your emails and it doesn't quite make sense of them that's that's what's happened there is, is you know it just thinks i'm in the hotel from midnight tomorrow tonight anyways yeah so there's some pretty cool functions in there like loads of io there's this stuff is kind of not that different from um, the standard Blitz file functions. And I don't really know why you would use them unless they're probably, you know, they're probably a bit more efficient or something like that. But I, there's not really, there's not really anything there, you know, that's different to the um, to, to the standard Blitz library equivalents. So, um, you know, there's, there's read character, I suppose. But, um, read and write characters but you can use that you can do that with a, a byte write anyway to a file so i haven't really used this because it i didn't really see the point but it might be that it makes a smaller executable or something like that so intuition you know what i haven't actually used this and the reason being that when i use a third party library for intuition now the the blitz intuition libraries are generally pretty good but if i'm using the other intuition libraries, I'll use the Amiblitz includes, which are basically wrappers for the OS calls. So it's, I haven't seen a need for this. Um, but you know what, I'm gonna have to read up on that because you know, there, there could be some good stuff there. Anyways, uh, loads and slips. Okay, so there's the actual overview document. Um, well, environments. Descriptions. Okay, so this is basically what we've been looking at, I think. Yeah, yeah, so they, they're, they're the same things. Looking mem. Again, these are commands that already exist in other places, so I don't really see the need for these. Yeah, okay, picking, poking. But you're still doing the same kind of things. Like, you know, there are, if you do in Blitz, if you use a dot b dot s, or dot b dot w dot l you do the same thing as these guys uh peak dot b and poke dot b you know so i don't really get the difference here 
Send it now. This is different. I have used some of this stuff. Um, I can't remember what it actually flips, to be honest. I remember using this and thinking, oh, this is very cool. Um, oh, yeah. So, yeah. Sorry. It, it, it gives you... So, if you've got big Endian and small Endian information. So, if if you're familiar with this, like, big Endian CPUs are, like, Motorola chips and the small Endian are Intel chips, broadly speaking. But it doesn't make a difference when you're talking about bytes, but when you're talking about words, the, this makes a big difference because in big Endian, it kind of reads as a human would read. So the big numbers, you start with the biggest part of the number and you get smaller. So the, the first byte is going to be the, let's say the millions, and the second byte is going to be the thousands, and the third byte is going to be the hundreds. Now it won't be that simple, but in, in binary terms, it's the same thing. Whereas Intel chips do it the opposite way around because Intel. But to be fair, architecturally, it's simpler to do it that way. In you know, in, in you know, in in logic terms. But for more human readable stuff, uh, the the Motorola way is nicer. It's just nicer. <laughs> so this flips them, and this is interesting because I've I've written programs before for um for doing raw reads of audio files and stuff like that, and. You need to do that because you need to know where this, where the raw, where the audios come from, and what kind of format it's in, and you're constantly flipping bytes, and so that's actually quite a useful, a useful library. Uh, load mem and save mem kind of do what they say on the tin; they just read and write chunks of memory. So address and len, you have to be careful with them because there's no memory protection on the Amiga. If you decide to write to a random bit of memory that belongs to DOS library, you're gonna absolutely fuck up the DOS library. You know, that'll be the end of you ever accessing disks until you reboot. So, you know, you just have to be careful what you do with that. But if you know the memory is yours for the reading or writing, then they're quite useful commands. And yeah, they do what they say in the tin, it's reading or writing X number of bytes to Y address. Now, unsigned, this is something that your normal blitz commands don't do because all variables internally in blitz are signed. So the largest number you can get in blitz is 2.1 billion and that's a 32-bit integer. So you can go bigger with floats, sorry, yeah, but the, the, you know, it, it, I'm just tr uh, trying to make it simple. Um, you've got, yeah, so you've got plus or minus 2 billion and that's that's the extent of your kind of integer variables. Um, so if you peak a byte with the normal peak dot b, it will return a byte. And in binary, it's you know binary is binary; it'll be the same. But it might give you a negative number when you might be expecting a positive number between zero and two five five. So unsigned peak byte and unsigned peak give you so give you the actual unsigned version, but into a signed variable. Okay, so that's why the variable is one size bigger than so. So you peak a byte, you have to put in a word variable, or you'll, or it's just the same as peaking the byte itself. So you'll still, you'll end up with a negative. So so reading it into a word gives you enough space to do the next size up, and word does the same thing. You read it into a long. So it's it's they you know they're they're, they're kind of useful. Print. So this, if you're familiar with C, this will give you a kind of similar idea to that. Um, so, like, Blitz doesn't do formatted printing. Instead, you sort of give it multiple parameters with each section of the string that you want to build up. So um, that's fine. And but printf, stringf do the same kind of things as they do in C. So it's, it it uses formatting. So you, what you do is you set a format, which is like the text, and you set your 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 string holders, and then it will, um, and then you can fill in those those placeholders, like you know, percent B for a byte, percent L for a, a percent I for an integer. You know, these 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 kind of things. They, you you if you fill those in, as you, as you, kind of with with the extra parameters. So it's just, it's just a different way of printing loads of different parameters. It'll make a lot of sense if you've worked with C before. Um, it'll make very little sense otherwise. 
and you know, you know, don't worry about it. Um, a lot of these functions exist elsewhere as well, but they're quite cool. If you're doing a lot of uh, string manipulation, um, these are some pretty cool functions. Um, so, yeah, so. Yeah, so you can see here it replaces the right string or sets and unwrites. Um, so, so yeah, so normally if you if you use especially these like you know or sets and unwrites, if you if you use or sets or set string, and you specify a string that's longer than what you have, you you'll get extra spaces on the end, and it's just kind of it pads it out with spaces, but you can actually specify different characters for this which is kind of cool so um so that's it but it's, it's they're just kind of like modifications of the same kind of functions uh string upper and string lower will convert to upper and lowercase string length um yeah so string so you can give you can give it a string or you can also give an address which is cool so basically what this will do is this will count the number of bytes until the next null value which is kind of how a string is normally terminated with a with a zero um and so it just counts the number of bytes um top tip if you read the long before the address of a, a string that will also give you the length and it's much much quicker than actually counting the bytes so long as so long as the commands you've used have updated that value as they as they go you know so so if you know, so so Blitz keeps a record of how long a string is, and that record is held four bytes before the address of the actual string. And I, I think I think a lot of C stuff does it the same way as well. But anyways, you can do a peak.l at the address of the variable minus four, and that'll give you the same thing. And it's much quicker if you're if you're doing a lot of it. If it it makes the code less neat, you know, it's a little bit clunky, but. Um, if you're looking for CPU cycle somewhere, that's a good way to find it. Or right, that's one place to find it. Um, everything else kind of is has equivalents in the normal um, Blitz library, so I'm going to them. And now system. Oh, control C, that's a good one. That is a good one because that will return if control C has been pressed because Blitz doesn't actually have a mechanism for handling control C. So if, if, you've, if you're familiar with the shell, you'll know that um, control C is a pretty standard way of breaking a program and control D is used for breaking scripts on the Amiga anyway um, but yeah control C isn't by default handled by blitz so this is this is a command to use for checking if it has actually been printed and this looks very much like C if you look at that um, until control C so you can do a repeat until and that's it now there should be a slash there the reason there isn't is because different versions of um amiga guide which is the kind of the program or the, the data type that's running this very nice little text browser um interprets backslashes and so they're used so you have to escape it with a second backslash and that only changed in like version 3.1 i think so in earlier versions, it doesn't. Um, or files that have been written for earlier versions lose a backslash. You see, so um, yeah, so that's that's it. But that should be a backslash n, like it is in C. And that's the new line character. Um, but yeah, so that's that's uh, Control C. Dispose. I have no idea what that does. Okay, so that's its own. There are three or four different sets of memory allocation commands. I don't know if any of them are any good or not, but um, dispose and new are one set. Um, so they're a system. So, uh, so in, instead you can use alloc mem and unalloc, which are the, the operating system commands. Um, Blitz has its own set as well. I don't, I don't know why there are all these different versions, but Okay, so these, and this is again, just getting the base of a library. So it gives you the, the library base and a few other things. So kick version. Um, so it's basically a check to see if 
you're running at least a certain version. So this is, this is if anyone's not familiar with it, the internal versions are different to the kind of the, the package versions that you have. So if you, if you have like, you know, Amiga OS comes in 3.0, 3.1, 3.5, 3.9, 3.2, and 4.0, 4.1, and so on and so forth. Um, internally, those numbers are a bit different. So 37, you can see here in the version here, the example here, 37 is Kickstart 2. 38 is Kickstart 2.1. 39 is Kickstart, Kickstart 3. 40 is Kickstart 3.1. Um, 44 is 3.5. 45 is 3.9. 46 is 3.1.4. 47 is 3.2. 50 is 4.0. So you can see you can see how it goes. And um, 34 is three is 1.3. So when you're looking for an actual Kickstart version, you use those numbers rather than 2.04 or 3.0 because that tells you what's that, you know it tells you a bit more about the capabilities because the the this internal version of a library or of a Kickstart or of any program that's what defines your API compatibility. You know, so you know you can you so because you can chop and change these things, and yeah, that's that's the only true way of knowing is by looking at the actual version. And if you read the, the system documentation, it will tell you if it only exists if it only works on a certain version. It will use those internal version numbers as well. Um, and finally, new. Okay, that's the other side of the the memory allocation stuff there. So, yeah. So if you if you've ever if you don't know about memory allocation basically it'll what it'll do is it will allocate a chunk of memory as belonging to your program and it will give you the address of that chunk of memory and then you can do what you want with that memory you can do whatever the hell you want with it nothing else should touch it you know nothing i'd like to say nothing else can touch it but in amiga os you can never guarantee that but yeah so nothing else should touch it and you know that's it it's um you should free it afterwards because if you're if you're dealing with memory manually like that blitz doesn't really know about it and when you quit the program that memory stays allocated and it's gone no other program can allocate it so you'll eventually it's like it that's that's you know what's called a memory leak and eventually you run out of memory if you keep running the program again and again and again because every time you lose a kilobyte or whatever it meant you've allocated and that's it so um if you you will know if you need to allocate memory. So if you don't know why the hell you would allocate a chunk of memory like that, you don't need to know about these commands. But if you know you what you, where you might come across that is if you want to make your own sound, like generate your own um, algorithmically generate a sound wave. You know, just the data for a sound wave. You might allocate memory for that. Or if you want to set up a bitmap manually without using the bitmap commands, which is there are reasons you would do that. They're quite niche in in themselves, um, but yeah, you can you can do that. But one one other thing is to um, you can load you can when you compile a program you can you can include binary data with it. So you can actually include your graphics data in the executable. And when you do that, you need to when you start your program, you need to decode those uh, data blocks, and you can you can if once you read the size of the data block you can allocate memory and then you can you can write that data block into that memory so that's 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 one use for it but you know what i don't know if there's a particular advantage to using Loden's version over the few other versions that there are i personally use the actual os calls because that seems to make the most sense to me anyways i will i'm going to leave it there um does anyone have any questions on that um because i see it's after midnight now and i i'm on holidays but i know other people aren't so uh yeah um but yeah if um yeah if you have any questions you know i'm i'm gonna be on holidays i'm not sure how much i'll be around but you know stick some messages in the discord the, there's the blitz basic discord there's the amiga the amiga tool jam discord as well um i'm on them on and off and uh, yeah, so, so send me some uh, questions if you have them or um, yeah, 
that's that's it. So I'll continue on this the next time, and we'll look at some other libraries and see what they have in them, because some of them have some pretty cool stuff. The new library, the new command set, all these ones begin with N here, apart from Neil's commands. They're just stuck there, because alphabetical order. But all the the end commands that's kind of almost there they are deliberately replacements for a lot of the blitz commands and they're far more efficient but they're closer to how c works so they work a lot with pointers and handles rather than object numbers and it's that layer that, that you know layer that slightly lower layer reduces your overhead significantly but also makes it a little bit trickier to deal with so that's it but i'll, I'll, go, I'll go through them the next time um but anyways, there you go. That is me for tonight. I am out of wine. I am out of talk. It's been nearly four hours. It's been three hours, 40 minutes. So I'm going to leave it there. Um, but yeah, I think we've done all right. We've got, we, we made a program that accepts arguments from Workbench and from the shell and it works fine. And um, yeah, cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if there's anyone around to rage. There might not be at this stage. What time is it? Uh, let's see who's around. Who's on? Who's on? Oh, Charlie Farr. Let's go and raid Charlie Farr. Um, oh, wow. Okay, so he's playing He's playing a few different things here. But um, he's currently playing uh, the Lion King on the Mega Drive. Um, now... The Lion King and Aladdin were actually very competent ports on the Amiga, so um, yeah, it's interesting to see the, you know the, you know the comparison. But anyways, let's 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 go over there. Uh, where's my thing gone? Okay, well, listen, thank you very much, people. Um, it's been a, uh, yeah, it's been been a fun evening. I'm gonna go on my holidays, and I'm gonna talk to you all in a couple of weeks. Um, appreciate you coming along and um, yeah talk to you soon thanks very much good night vector funk good night uh, hot dog good night everyone and uh, I'll talk to you soon Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the. Um, thank you very much for the raid. Thank you. Welcome in. How are you doing? Uh, hope you have a nice stream. Um, you're playing retro. That's always really helpful, isn't it? It's really helpful when it's like, I hope you're playing retro. You know that that narrows it down to about forty years. Um, well, tw twenty five years. Um, got a cold night mix or up. All right. Have a good night. Have a good night. Yeah, thank you very much for the raid. Uh, oh, Vector Punk, welcome in. You, you all know Nivrig. You seem to all know Nivrig. Um, I've seen the blitz. I've seen I've seen the blitz basic coding stream. Nice. What were you, what were you coding? What were you doing? What what um? Blitz basic. Wow. I'm pretty sure I've played I've played a blitz basic game. Couple of weeks ago, I can't for the life of me think what it was now. Definitely played one. Um, yeah, well, thank you very much for the raid. I'm Charlie Farr. Um, I play lots of retro variety. I play lots of Amiga, uh, Commodore 64, anything, anything up bits and two bit. Uh, I do Doom on Mondays. Uh, Wentz is is checking in new games on old systems. This is not one of them. Uh, it's just kind of I kind of like spinning the wheel now, just playing some random game. Um, but what, yeah, um, it's usually it's usually retro. But Mondays at the moment is seems to be busy as it's been. Uh, do you do some general tutorial stuff? Nice. 
Oh, you were doing you were doing three star wars. Three star wars. Uh, who's the one that I haven't played yet? No, that's. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Have I played it? Have I played it? Um, I'd have to look at well, okay, I can't look at that because I'm not on the Xbox. So, um, this game is mostly attributed to the decisions of Virgin Atlantica. Virgin is a proper platformer. Ah, I've played it. I've played it. Megas of it. It's a game based on the Aztec Colossus. I've played it. I have played it. Yeah. Yeah, I've played it. Oh god, it's a it's a it's a while ago. Did you make it through like lockdown? Was it like a like a lockdown game? Yeah. We've had a shave day. Uh, I think I did the shave day. But thank you, thank you, Mick. I had to put you through it. Right. I, I don't know how to put. I don't know how to get back in, but I don't know how to use the monkeys. How to use the monkeys? It's like usually you can, unless I've got to use the the rhino for it. I can use that. Oh! Yeah, me, so my capture doesn't like this game. So what? Hang on. How did that, how did that work? Oh my god. I think we might have to swiftly move on from this game soon. <laughs> uh, is this a Mayflash joystick? Well, this one, no. This is a Mad Cat's uh, Capcom Street Fighter 4 joystick from from when Street Fighter 4 came out, and it's made like it's made like it's really well made. It's like metal. Uh, it's got a metal base on it. Um, yeah, it's made, it's made to last anyway, let's put it that way. And I think you can fit like Stanwood. Uh, Stanwood. Uh, Stanwood. That's a new word. Stanwood Sanwa parts on it. Uh, I don't think it's got Sanwa parts at the moment, but they feel they're definitely equivalent. Roar at the monkeys. Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh, it's a puzzle. Oh, for flip. I've just realised it's a puzzle. Nice. Oh, God. Oh, no. That makes it worse. So. So you can turn these monkeys around, right? Oh, Jesus Christ. That's made it ten times worse. I was already not liking it. I, I mean, now I have no idea what to do. How do I... Just the lower purple monkey. How do I use this tail, though? How do I use this? Like, what? What is it? Is it up or down? Is it left or right? I guess instructions will be a thing, right? You know, you've got F. Oh, you've got a Mayflash F three hundred on your Xbox. 